to Wrestling Fan Wrestling Show. I'm the big beefy boy, Shaz Beef, and today I'm joined by my old book. Oosh. It is Morrow, of course. That really hurt my shoulder. It hurt my shoulder. Yeah, so. man, I have made bits. Yeah, I think we need to reverse it. I go this way. Yeah, that, that'd be a lot that better for me. And then we can go, go, Power Rangers. How are you? Grant. Yeah, super. You've been sleepy. Very hungover, Shan. You're very hungover. I don't have that problem anymore, Mara. Oh, I know, I'm jealous. Yeah. Hence the sunglasses. I just... <laughs> that's all. I, I'm just... I'm hungover from all the times that I've done drinking. I'm yeah, still in the week. Still, re- yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I was at my... Uh, Did you do two days? Two days, yeah. Mara, you divil. I know, I'm an old divil. He's an old divil. divil. It was my 74-year-old auntie's surprise 70th birthday party. Went and dropped a load of bangers at it, didn't Oh, you? yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. My, it's my second time in... Eight days getting drunk with pensioners. Nice. I'll tell you one thing. They know how to drink. They know how to drink. And they know how to buy you rounds. They do, actually. <laughs> yeah, in fairness, they do. Um, what I was going to say to you, where have you been? I was at a wedding. Was it your wedding? No, it wasn't my oh. wedding. Uh, and so I missed uh, the Darren Burns episode, which I thought was fantastic. Did you like it? I thought, and I said it to you privately, but I'll say it publicly, I thought it was the best episode yet of the wrestling fan wrestling show. Oh. Well, let us know what you think. Drop a comment below. Um, y- are you just saying this, though? Because Bernsey had told us off air that you're probably his favorite of all four of us. Yeah, sure, look. I didn't know he said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been dining on that one for a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. Paddy Morrow had acknowledged as well that Bernsey somewhat called him out as well. He I did, went up yeah, to yeah. training and he was like, you tell Bernsey! <laughs> yeah, we can get them cutting promos on each other. Get Bernsey back in the... Uh, back in the game. Back in the game. I'll be someone's manager. If you want to manage one, I'll manage the other. Yeah, that'd be good. I just want to be involved. I think yeah. that's. I, I think want to wrestle. Do you think we should do more wrestler interviews? Yes. Yeah. After that, hundred percent. Do you know what I loved about it? What? It was like a window into a very specific uh, time period of Irish independent wrestling. Yeah. And a lot of stuff. I, I don't think that's been chronicled. It ha- maybe it has. Maybe it hasn't. I don't know. Or if it has, it's hard to find. Yeah. Um. I know that uh, IWW, um, I think the name on YouTube is Suicide Fighter, where the owner, Simon Rochford, sits down with Mandrake and they go through some stuff. That's cool. Like, Yeah. yeah. And when I was when I was going over, because after Burnsy um, and my chat with him, I was kind of going in a deep dive. And mm. one of the best historical, this might seem a bit strange, one of the best his, ways of documenting history on it, because I was looking for different videos and different photos and different clips, is through boards.ie. Oh, yeah, of course. Boards.ie yeah. were fairly, it was, they still have a wrestling forum now, but it was fairly big. Had enough people sure, on it. Irish independent wrestling. Yeah, just saying, this show's happening now, this show's happening now. It's kind of a bit dead now, but it was, um, yeah. yeah, it was cool. I remember Mick Wall, who was Connor Hurley, got in a, challenged someone to a fight, or proper, like a wrestler challenged a guy to a fight because he was just slagging him off on, uh, on boards. boards all the time. So he challenged him to a fight. Class. Yeah, Madman Manson responded. Did as he? Well, yeah. Nice. He says, um, he's pretty sure Madman Manson is dead. Oh. That's what Madman said. Madman said that Madman's dead. Yeah. Nice. So, R.I.P. Madman. From Madman. Yeah. Do you like our? We got frames. Frames. Yeah. Shout out to Matthew there. He framed it up. If you can't, uh, if you're listening, and you want to go look at the video, the, you can go. It's on YouTube. We've taken a monster step forward in terms of our set. Yeah, and our production value. Yeah. That's the only thing that I wouldn't like about doing uh, like interviews is that I'd like to keep in it here. person. Yeah, I'd yeah, like. Yeah. I, I don't like online, and that isn't to denigrate anybody that does online stuff. Mm. I just don't like watching that. Yeah, like when me, me, because me and Dunf did a lot of. Yeah, and I did not like that at all. Yeah, that was a terrible podcast. It was scheduled for two falls. Scheduled for two falls, yeah, and a lot. You know, what, what does that even mean? I don't know. We really had a hard time coming up. Like with a, a name. like a two out of three. No, it was a two out of two falls match. You had to win. You had to win two. Two. But if you didn't, it was a draw. Yeah. And we went to a time limit. Terrible drive, name. No wonder the podcast failed. Yeah, that's exactly why it failed. It was the name. Mm. Nothing to do with me and Dunphy's deep seated hatred of each other. He's an asshole, isn't he? He's such an asshole. So I missed your his comeback pod. 
It's terrible. Yeah, I didn't even. Terrible. Podcast. I can't even remember. It was very unmemorable. What were we talking about? Don't, I can't remember. No. I just remember I tuned in. I miss Johnny Martz, though. I miss Johnny Martz. Yeah, our Kenny Omega. Yeah, he is our Kenny Omega. Oh. Rest up, bud. Yeah, see you soon, Johnny Martz. See you soon, Johnny Martz. Don't what are we talking about? We are talking about SummerSlam. The biggest party of the summer. This is right, straight off the bat. What always pissed me off August is in autumn. August, yeah, technically, I so suppose. So it's not the summer anymore. Also, Autumn Slam. Summer Slam to me. <laughs> Autumn Slam. Class. Autumn Slam. Well, in America, it'd be Fall Slam. Yeah, as the leaves fall off the trees, trees. will Damien Priest fall from the heights of World Wrestling Federation Entertainment Worldwide Championship there Wrestling you go. Extreme? You just caught a better promo than was on the show. Yeah, but like it's Autumn Slam. Change it to Autumn Slam. Also, it didn't feel like Summer Slam because obviously they've moved it two weeks earlier. Three, two, three weeks earlier Is this it? year. Yeah, it used to be like in the latter. In, yeah, and around the 20th, that, yeah, the yeah. third Which week. is my birthday. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, so Summer Slam to me was uh, almost like a birthday bash. Are, are you a. Are you a well, they're going to have Bash of Berlin at the end of the month. Yeah, but that's. But then they have nothing in September. Yeah, I know. Actually, yeah. look, I'm telling you. There is an oversaturation of pay-per-views anyway, so sometimes absence makes the heart grow fond. Brand split pay-per-views. This guy in his brand split. Brand split pay-per-views. Well, I wanted to see the Wyatts. Triple H made a really good point at the at the end of the post press conference, oh, yes. I, which are stupid, and by the way, they're so stupid. But he made a, made a point of just saying. Um, yeah, like we need to keep stuff for SmackDown. We need to keep stuff yeah, for Raw. We have, we have a lot of content we have to put out. Yeah. Um, before we go off the bat, um, before we delve into the actual event itself, three-hour pre-show was a lot of shite, but... Nonsense. AEW fans going, oh, are well, you giving out about AEW doing this, and now WWE do that, and now... We, we, dear. we don't watch the pre-shows for AEW or... Well, you w. did. You watched I, Penta and... I watched Mr. Scott, yeah. Yeah. But what it, Which was smart out of them. If they hadn't booked Mystical on the pre-show, you wouldn't watch I wouldn't watch the pre-show. <laughs> and like I consume an ungodly amount of wrestling content and not even I so I don't know who watches these either a com- any company's pre-show. I tried to watch it, but I was like Ugh. But the, the the big thing about it for me is say WWE have a four hour event. Mm-hmm. They have SummerSlam, it's four hours, they have seven matches. Mm-hmm. AEW have a four-hour event. They have 13 matches. No, they have 13, including the pre-show. It's like 10. Right. 11. Right. On the main show. Basically. Okay, so with P- that's still a lot of matches. It's a lot of... And it's a lot of wrestling to consume with a lot of wrestlers because a lot of those could be six-man matches. Yes. And so, and people talk about the pacing of the WWE events going, there's only an hour wrestling on a three-hour show, yeah. or there's only... I did think this felt better. This felt so much... That's what I wanted to get. This yeah. felt like... Fairly I swift. feel like I got more wrestling and less ads. Ads, yeah. I felt like I don't know. I haven't done it. Now, sometimes the scientific. ads, sometimes, much to my detriment, like watching AEW pay per view, there's certain matches you just tune out for without trying. Without, because you haven't got a mental break. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Maybe. That's why, like, plays have intermissions. I know yeah. movies don't, but that's constant moving action, and there's downtime and movement. And it's, and it's basically only two hours. Yeah. yeah. I think well, a like, wrestling event, there's a lot of information being thrown at you, and the digital age that we live in, mm. where, like, your phone is constantly glued to your hand. Yeah, 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 like, it's so easy to look at, hey, wait, is that, did he, was he in this before? Let me go check that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he used to... He used to wrestle in Lucha Underground. There's oh, no way. And it's not a Oh, my God. What? I, I flirted and with, uh, like, live tweeting. I think it was one of How them. people do this. I did it once, and I was like, I can't do this. Like, how can people do this while watching the event? Yeah. I see someone, like, after it, and it's just bang, bang, barrage of... Yeah. It's like, what's the fucking thing? Yeah, like, I, I tried it once for, I think it was Double or Nothing or something this year. Do you get any traction on it? No, I, I think I got one like out of 20 something <laughs> tweets. <laughs> Twitter's that weird. Was you as well. Was it? I, think it was either I you felt or, bad for you. Yeah, I think it was like, it was me shouting into the void. Yeah. You were just like, oh, this poor guy just trauma bone. It's, it's much like our Twitter account, the <laughs> yeah, rest of the yeah, wrestling yeah. show. Twitter's weird. It is weird. It is strange. Weird. I, I never it. call it X. But uh, like that, those downtimes t- between matches, mm. albeit it was too long. I think helps the pacing of the overall wrestling on the show. Possibly. I do like, cause you know, I've said it a million times. 
probably my favorite period of any wrestling company ever is like 2016 17 18 new japan i just loved that and one of the things i liked about that was the matches on the pay-per-view got increasingly more important and there was no downtime but they were rarely five-hour shows Mm. And they only, like, one of their pay-per-views back then, most of their pay-per-views outside of maybe Wrestle Kingdom, would have, like, four super important matches and then a lot of, kind of, six-man or eight-man tags that would set up future pay-per-view matches. Mm. So you were getting, like, four super important matches. You weren't getting, like, ten, nine, seven matches that had, like, super high stakes. Um, With this SummerSlam... Every match seems super important, I thought. Mm. I thought everything, not even necessarily coming into it, it seemed super important. Every but match the ramifications, had they, yeah, every But every match either left with more importance than it started with, if you get me. Mm. With the exception of maybe one, and we'll get into that. But we'll go... In we'll some start, cases, yeah. We'll start with the pre-show, three hours, no wrestling on it. It was just three hours of chat. So they're really going this whole, this is a massive event, mm. a big fight feel. Three hours of chat, though, is way too much. Yeah, and three hours to see the stuff that you're going to see on the pay-per-view anyway. Yeah, because like, they just replay all the yeah, promo packages. Like, I, I did tune in for a bit, and then I, I realized what it was. I didn't. I was like, all right, I'm not going to see any matches or anything cool. So. Like, you could have had a couple you know, of these matches that end up on, like, main event. Uh and they have like two guys who are just thrown out there. Or something. Remember Buddy, Mur- Buddy Murphy and Tony Nese had a f- fucking banger of a match. Unbelievable match on a on a pre-show. Was it WrestleMania pre-show? Was it, Aust- yeah, it could have been WrestleMania or an Australia pre-show. Maybe. maybe they had a banger. Yeah, like that's what I want. Just throw out two lads. It doesn't matter if they're storyline or not. If you're doing a three-hour pre-show, just or stick on a six-man with like Rey Mysterio or something. Eh, you know? No. I don't know. Maybe maybe something high octane. Anyway. Yeah, that's like a wild six man. Yeah. yeah, that's what Nitro used to do with yeah. the top of the hour uh, luchas. Luchas. Yeah, at the end yeah. of hour one, going into hour two, you yeah. get some mad high octane match. Stick like a couple of them spread out. Over yeah, the like stick an AEW main event on the pre-show of, yeah, uh, of your show, and yeah. then your wrestling would get better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we start off uh, with uh, Liv and Rhea. Now you notice that we both don't have notes. Yes. Because. Much like the Twitter thing, yes, I was getting fairly annoyed writing notes, yes, and then I have to rewind it and be like, oh, I missed this and that. And you were drunk watching this, yes. So this might be a bit hazy. Yeah, my notes were my text messages to you after the fact. Like that was two and a half hours gone. Is anyone watching live? I'm like, yeah, yeah I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, so I did. We didn't really discuss the first few matches. Yeah, and I was struggling to stay awake after like match two. Yeah, it's always the case. Man, five. I'm 34 years of age. Staying up till five o'clock in the morning. I tried to stay up not conducive for to the boxing health. afterwards. After SummerSlam, there was boxing on. Yeah, Bud Crawford was fighting, and I love watching Bud Crawford. Uh, but so I watched the co- I switched over from SummerSlam to the boxing. The call man was on. Great fight. Then they do an M and M concert. Who does the, the boxing. boxing before the main event? I was like, right, I tapped out. I'm, I'm, done. I'm done. I'm done. It was like a jelly roll concert at the start of SummerSlam. <laughs> No one here knows who Jelly Roll is. No idea who Jelly Roll is. And I didn't Google him either. He did one hell of a... Uh, joke slam. Joke slam. It looked yeah, fucking yeah. bad. I thought it was going to look shit, but then... It, it looked it, fantastic. It looked amazing. Skipping ahead, spider alert. Yeah, spider alert. All right, so uh, Liv versus Rhea with Dom there. Were you looking forward to this match? As an opener, I thought, okay, cool. But they're definitely packing to the end in terms of wrestling. Like Liv Morgan for as good as she is like you know she would be up supreme improvement yeah but she wouldn't be up there with like one of the top workers no, no, no. so you're coming in with a bit of a the gimmick in the match and then you have Rhea been taken down a peg but with her shoulder yeah hey, look she was going into it with the shoulder injury so yeah. it made sense that they incorporate it into they had the to, match yeah. itself yeah and I'd say I don't know if this is her being really good at selling or what, but I don't think she was 100%. Really? Why? I just felt like, you know, I suppose she had a long layoff. When did she last wrestle? January, February? Wasn't that long ago? No, sure. She's at WrestleMania. April. Four months. Yeah. She, yeah, she didn't... The way she worked and the way they incorporated the shoulder, I felt like they were helping her kind of cover up the fact that she wasn't fully She's, recovered. Is there an issue with Rhea though that... Like she's so superpowered, in the sense that she is legit 
the most badass looking woman I think that WWE have ever had. Yeah, China, but yeah. I even think she looks like because she's more athletic than China. Yeah. Well, different she, types of she, athletic. Yeah, she can do different things. She, she's more fluid at wrestling than oh, China. Oh, big time, yeah. So yeah. therefore, she looks like the most dangerous. Yeah, like how do you build people to match her? Yeah. It was like, Are, remember when China was wrestling Jeff Jarrett and wrestling Jericho and mm-hmm. then went and wrestled Ivory and... Yes. Like she how, didn't even want to do it. No. She was like, like how, this is how, a step how, back. Like, how do you... How do you create matchups that seem plausible that the other person could win? Yeah, how does Rhea look like she could... Is in peril. Yeah. So we're going to be... Like, but they someone did it. They pulled they it did, off. Yeah. You know, I think, like, with Charlotte, she could probably do it. You know? Charlotte's phenomenal. Yeah, like, she could pull off the... But with someone like Liv, you like have to Karen. do an injury angle. Yeah, and you have to do some external smoke and mirrors to like level the playing field yeah so it's going to be hard like it's hard visually for Rhea to be the baby face in those matches you have to do some injury thing yeah and which she did yeah she did the shoulder and then burst it off the announce table yes and it's like ah, I have um, to get it back and like, I'm like cool that was cool I, I thought she was legit injured when she was like no my shoulder's gone and then when they started doing the pops and circumstance yeah yeah I was like okay she's just really good <laughs> she, yeah she is she's awesome she's uh, like, she's like definitely for me in terms of like on the women's wrestling side of things she has to be like top five in the world or something but does that not right fair enough and then she goes to use the chair in the match mm. and you're like what you're gonna lose the game match, like, and yeah, I know there was they, they, they a lot think, of that on this show. Yeah, there was, and you're Logical. like, this is this is stupid. Yes. Like Damien Priest does it a bit as well. Yeah. You're like, this is why, like, why, why, why would you go use a chair? I know you're so annoyed, but you couldn't win. You can just win the match, win your, win your, your title back. Yeah, and then you can start beat the chair up with a yeah. chair. Well, instead of, and then Dom did it, and you're like, Dom took the chair off her. Makes sense. Yeah. Like, but there was another thing there like Dom saved her earlier in the match from the dive yeah why yeah to only turn on her later I don't get that like well, Liv, Liv was diving on him he was like oh. yeah but it makes no sense like logically it, so to me it was like the dive spot where he saves Rhea to only turn on her again later like they did the dive spot just to swerve the audience. Yeah. Not for the story to make sense. Yeah. That kind of annoyed me. Well, if if you were dumb and you were building towards this big moment at the end, mm. like you're not going to shoot your load beforehand, are you? I know, but why save her? Because they were together. Yeah. Like they were standing, he was going to hear in the yeah. back. See, this is always the thing that annoys me as well. You see even tag team matches the whole time where one guy turns on another guy at the end of the tag team match. I just turn on him at the start of the match and the tree beat him down and then the other team pinned yeah, her Yeah, how could Dom have turned on her at yeah, the start that, of the that's, that's like I'm making a kind of a false equivalence but it's like one of those things like yes, you have to do the match with drama and then you pay it off at the storyline pay off at the end. So it's like it's a hard thing to you know, why didn't he just like smack her with a chair before the bell rings or right yeah, before, before the bell rings bang slap with a chair go in one two three yeah. there's your summer slam like, yes exactly so they have to give us a autumn slam autumn slam fall slam autumn slam fall, fall slam bro so it was a decent opener when I, I did not understand until Dom kissed Liv at the end that he had turned on Rhea because yeah, so he threw they, the chair into the ring and I was like he's giving it so Rhea can use it yeah yeah and like, then Liv ended up using it and I was like oh they're going to play this play this storyline over the next few weeks it of, was a mistake I yeah. didn't mean that um, but no yeah it was like the Survivor Series 98 when the big boss man threw the uh, his stick to the rock by accident instead of Mankind, mm. but then it wasn't by accident. It wasn't by accident. Or no, Shamrock. It was against Ken Shamrock. No, it was Mankind and Sh- uh, Mankind and The Rock in the final of Survivor Series. Didn't he do, throw the thing earlier in the night? I have no idea. Night. If it was earlier in the night because it was a tournament night. Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea. I think, I think it was in the previous match. Yeah, well, overall, good match. Uh, the yeah, Oblivion, I only realised that... Oblivion. She does it from the middle rope, and Liv is her name, and Liv is in the middle, middle of Oblivion. <laughs> and 
Dominic Mysterio's is is worst mustache. He looks oh. like such a piece of shit that I love it now. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like when he started, and of course, when you start wrestling, you kind of suck. But yeah. when he started, you looked at him and you're like, he is never, ever, ever, ever going to do anywhere. anything in wrestling. Yeah. There's just, he doesn't have. It seemed like he had nothing. Absolutely nothing. And then he grew the uh, He grew a mullet and a mustache and became a piece of shit. And. Uh, that getting locked up storyline did him wonder. Kind of looks like Eddie. Does Weird. look? He looks like Eddie. Kind of like he could be Eddie Guerrero's kid. Not yeah, he looks like Wish Eddie. <laughs> We've got Eddie. Uh, but uh, like Eddie was very small, and until he started putting on a lot of muscle, maybe Don needs to start, you know, juicing up, juicing up by, mm. juicing up, juicing Liger, juicing Liger the shit up. Uh, yes, yeah. and like at the time, I was like, why is this the opener? And it became clear later on in the show why it kind of. It felt like I had to put that as the opener because in my mind I was sure they were going to start with Gunter and Priest mm. for storyline reasons. They obviously couldn't. Can to have two belt stuff. Yeah, it's very rare that they put on their two world title belts back to back at the end of pay per view. Yeah, but I liked it. And then they did a, a kind of like a backstage thing with Finn and JD and Carlito and Damien, kind of like where's. Where's Dom? Where's Dom? And then Priest and JD or Priest and Balor had, had a bit of a thing, yeah. and then everything was fine and sorted. And yeah, yeah, it, w- it was nice kind of foreshadowing. Decent opener and some good storyline progression. Yeah, uh, Rhea Ripley is the boss. She's, She's awesome. class. She's awesome. Uh, next match, uh, Braun and Sammy. Yeah. That was next, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I I enjoyed it, like because uh, how can you not enjoy Sammy? Yeah, and how can you not enjoy Braun? Yeah, but people were. He's going, oh, Sammy, you squashed. Like, he can't, he's just after going and beating Gunter, and now you haven't squashed against Braun. Ago. But yeah. I'm like, yeah, but how cool does that make Braun look, even yeah, if yeah. it was a squash? It was the right decision at the right time. Yeah, uh, the the match itself. It was a coronation match. It wasn't like a back and forth, like, epic professional wrestling match. The match had a very specific purpose of we're making Braun. Yeah, because I thought their previous match was better. Yeah, it was a better match. It was designed to be, like not every pay-per-view match is like, go out there, you have 20 minutes, put on the best match you can. Mm. Like this was, you've got six minutes, make Braun look like a fucking badass. Like Sammy's so fluid. Like even stuff, looking at the gorilla, I can't even lift my arm up anymore, but looking at the gorilla press where uh, Braun gorilla presses Sammy and he just goes up so flawlessly. Mm. There's a great thing in uh, the very first ever Nitro when you look at Ric Flair and Sting and they do like three, four gorilla presses in a row and you're just like, oh man. I can't even lift my arm up now. Let 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 alone alone with a Ric Flair on top. Yeah, just slamming them and slamming. You have such an appreciation for, for... for that, if you've ever tried to do it, you're just like, oh man, that is sick. And they make it look easy. Yeah, even little small things are making it look sick. So like, when you're in training, you're made, you know, you 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 th- have to think about everything that yeah, you're doing. Yeah, yeah. So when you're seeing someone newish, like Braun, or like Solo, mm. you're seeing someone newish like Braun, you're going, oh man, he's... It's really cool the way he's learned that really quickly, or yeah. it's really cool the way like he's really, able to he's do that. He's only wrestling what, like, is it maybe three years? Mm, if even, yeah, yeah, two and a half, three years. Um, no massive standout moments in it. No, it was a car. Like I said, it was a coronation match. Did, did Sammy one missing goal. the hello of a kick and yeah. Now here's the second match in a row where they did the run, shoulder into the corner post spot. Yeah. They did it, I think, four or five matches in a row. Draw me insane. That was a. It was one time I was watching. I, I think it was AEW, and every match had a knee. Yeah. A knee to the face. Yeah. And I was just like, knees to the face, or like you know, Shining Wizards. That was yeah, a big, yeah. that was a big thing. Even Omega's V Trigger wasn't his finisher, but yeah. it was his. It was a big thing. It was but now everyone's knee into the face. It yeah. could have been NXT either. Maybe it was like Champa was doing it, and yeah, a lot of them were doing it at that time as well. Like, it stop, could have been either shot. Stop, stop kneeing people in the fucking face, yeah, with and the exact same knee. It's like it's become such a WWE thing that the bigger wrestler, in order for the smaller wrestler to get some heat on them, the bigger wrestler has to smash themselves into the post. Mm. So they've done it to themselves rather than the other person get one up on them. I just thought they went to that well five times in a row. <laughs> It's like, can, can somebody talk to somebody backstage? Joe, you know, if you're backstage, right? And it's the third match of the night. It's an agent. It's yeah, an you, agent issue. But yeah. if you're the worker, right, and you're backstage, and you see it happening in the match, 
directly before you you're like oh, shit I should probably think of something different there for that yeah would you I don't know you should I think well yeah maybe but not if it's someone so new like Bron as well yeah yeah that but like scary even in there because it happened in the following two or three matches I don't after believe that you too. I don't believe you it did it was every match the, oh, Frank, the Frankensteiner that was cool it was awesome knowing that Scott was in was in the crowd yeah, yeah with with Rick that piece of shit yeah with, with, with Rick um, Rick is or Bron, Rick is Bron's dad right yes imagine seeing that though you must be so super proud your yeah, son's like the intercontinental why champion why don't you just use Steiner yeah fucking stupid well, not now like when you considered all the heat that Rick got, had previously got yeah but still like just call him Bron Steiner yeah, it's uh, so much of a cooler name. Steiner is a cool name. Yeah, it reminds me of Brackus with the two Ks now. You yeah, know, Bron yeah. Breaker. Bron Breaker. So, yeah, nothing else for that. What does Sammy do now? Does uh, Sammy move on into a I Bloodline? Think we, I think we'll get to that in the main event. Yeah, I think. So, who's next for Bron? Uh, Liv is going to stay with Rhea. Yeah, that's fairly apparent. Uh, who's next for Bron? He probably is. does another thing with Sammy. Could do. No, they've done two already. Yeah, but like I'm talking about a raw. Yeah, oh yeah, like probably Bash have... Berlin is not too far away. He probably doesn't even wrestle on Bash Berlin. No, he Berlin. doesn't. I don't think he does. Yeah, I think what we see with him now for a while is Kaiser. That's a good call. Ludwig Kaiser. That's because he's call. been spearing the shit out of him as well, hasn't yeah. he? That would be a good match too and in Bash of Berlin. Oh, that'd be good. They could have also a banger of a main event on Raw, like 15 minutes. Kaiser and Breaker yeah. or Ilya. I'd love to see that again. Ilian Breaker. Yeah. Because Breaker has beaten Ilya. That's the call. But uh, at Bash of Berlin. Oh, well, I don't care. Just show me that match. Mm. Seamus. He'd be a good person to throw him in with. Give him 10 minutes of Seamus. He'll learn loads. Yeah. And they'll beat the shit out of each other. And I'll be super entertained. All right. There you go. Yeah, Breaker. there's actually a load of people on. Like, they like have Raw's lo- pretty fucking good now. Compared to Smackdown. Smackdown, it's. Weber. Why is that? It's not fun. Uh, I just think Bloodline, Bloodline two point Bloodline sucked the life out of too much stuff on Solo SmackDown. Solo doesn't feel like he should be the focal point of the heel side of his same thing, TV. Same show. thing happens at, all the time. It's Bloodline lol. Exactly. Yeah, Bloodline lol. It's like Cena back in the day. Cena lol. You know. Uh, and I just think there's a more interesting crop of mid card talent on Raw. Well, there is on SmackDown too. Uh, it's just you never really see them. Yeah, who's, Santos, who's, Esc- Santos Escobar, like Andrade. They have great wrestlers. What the fuck gone. is Andrade doing now? He was wrestling someone last week. They had a good match on Speed. No, he is did something speed? on is SmackDown last tam- week. Is 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 there something inherently wrong with Andrade? Yes. Is it whose fault? Is it his fault? Yes, I think so. Why? I don't know. What is it like? Why? What isn't clicking? Because it clicked. It clicked in NXT to a degree, for only for a short period of time. He had a brilliant run for a short period. His of match time. with Gargano was fucking one of phenomenal. my favorite WWE matches ever. He has amazing matches. Yeah, remember that but, little run with Rey Mysterio for a while. Remember when they brought him in first into NXT? Mm. He didn't click at all no. until they put did the kind of Selena? party by gimmick and put Selena Vega with him and put him with fucking Charlotte. Yeah, I'd like That's that. That's his wife. Yeah. Andrade Flair. That'd be badass. Yeah, I don't know. There's just something wrong with him. A Mexican Ric Flair. Yeah, he's and he could pull it off. He could pull it off. Dye his hair blonde. He looks fantastic in a suit, like, you know? He looks... He's a beautiful man. And, like, I just don't understand... Dye his hair little... blonde with Charlotte. Do what you did, because <laughs> I, I, I liked, I liked the, the Mike Bennett, Mike Canellas thing. Yeah, I like yeah. the way he was taking Maria's name. Yeah, and that being was a, funny. Do that with Andrade. Andrade, Andrade Flair. Flair. Blonde hair. Oh, man. Like, he's super talented, but there's just... Like, his whole time in AW, there's a lot of people, like, saying, why don't they push him harder? Why don't they push him harder? I was like... Because I don't think, even if they did, it wouldn't make a difference. Cut with Charlotte. You know, like, we should hear a lot of this now, going both ways, right? WWE to AW, AW, WWE. Whenever a wrestler moves, this contingent on the internet will say, ah, Triple H fumbled wrestler X Tony Khan fumbled wrestler X and in reality quite often it's no that wrestler actually kind of hit their peak I, I, I had had this argument I think it was with John Martin I was like remember Vince fired a load of people mm. 
and everyone was like, oh, why did Keith Lee got released? And, yeah, yeah. and I was like, why Why did he do that? And I was like, who was Vince actually wrong about, though, when you think about it? Mm. Maybe Swerve. Swerve, yes. Swerve, That's yeah. That's the obvious one. Um, but everyone else didn't. Hit Raw, they came back. They didn't do anything. The yeah. OC, they came back. They didn't do anything. You know, well, who was Keith he Lee wrong? obviously had uh, health Keith issues. He had massive and- potential. But, like, you know, when he went to AEW, like, people thought that that was automatically going to be the making of him. Mm. There's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes, as you said, health issues and uh, different politics that go in behind stuff that don't help you ascend to the top. Mm. It doesn't always just happen. No, and it, it's not like, like, you know, people say to me, like, I think maybe did me and you have this conversation about Wardlow? Yeah. And like you were saying... He'd be booked phenomenally in WWE. Yeah, but then again, right... He's just a worse version of Braun Breaker. I don't think he would be booked for Omni in WWE. Oh, he would, man. Because he's not like, he looks, you know, AEW have a smaller... His swanton is amazing. I just don't, I think he has a a ceiling and he's hit the ceiling. Do what you try to do with Sean O'Hare with Wardlaw. (laughs) Yeah, Vince the, de- dirty <laughs> the Devil's Advocate. Yeah, that was cool gimmick. That was amazing. Yeah. Do that with Wardlow now. Go yeah, on. I don't know. Like, I, I feel like Wardlow has hit his peak. No. And no. no I don't mean like forever for and shame. ever and ever. I, think, I don't think forever he could like still make improvements, but his current version, he's at, he's done he, as he's, well as he can do. He's He needs to go to a different company. I think NXT could be good for him. NXT, TNA, he needs a fresh start. Go yeah. to Japan. That would be great for him. All yeah. Japan for him now. That would be a cracker landing spot. But like, New Japan need... They need foreign hills. Yeah. And they need beefy foreign hills. Big. I know a couple... A couple of baby boys. We've got two good shoulders oh, between man. us. Oh, man. Between us. What moves can we do? We can do a double choke slam with... With our other hands. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit sore and it will get worse, but... Yeah. We can do it at the start. Look, we're not going out there claiming to be the cleanest workers in the world. Um, Bron Breaker, though, become an Intercontinental Champion. Cool. Good bit of business. Yes. Okay, so one title change, one not title change. I'd look and I going... Oh. I want some tag team stuff. I want some tag team stuff. I want some This tag is like, team. what, the fourth... Is this our fourth WWE pay-per-view? Since right? WrestleMania, we haven't had a tag, tag team match. defense on oh, no, PLE. Yeah. yeah. PLE. Yeah. That's what they are. The premium live events. That's such a corporate-sounding bullshit title. I hate it. I hate corporate speech. No, but you know what? Yeah, but the, you know why they're doing it, like... You go to Indianapolis and go, we're going to put on a premium live event for you. Yeah. And they're going to go, we'll pay for that. We're going to put on a pay-per-view. That means it's just a television product. No, they're bringing... We're a, giving you a premium. They're bringing an experience. They can, they're bringing the Viking experience along. Oh, yeah. Them. They're bringing Eric and... And Ivor. Ivor and Valhalla. Other people. Yeah. And it's premium. Berserker. But yeah, give me some tag team wrestling on my wrestling pay-per-views. My professional wrestling pay-per-views should have a tag team title match. Did you did you pay per every view you watched? No, you didn't. I only You watched it on the network. It's a premium live event you piece of shit. Yeah, I do pay for the AW ones on what's that thing? Fight. Fight yeah. Fight.tv or so, Triller. Okay, so Bron Breaker, he's your new Intercontinental Champion. Intercontinental, good piece of business. Good piece of business. Intercontinental title has a bit of a, a lure to it now. Oh, it does, yeah, big time. Um, despite the design of it, which I hate. Not a fan of the design, but the title feels like it has meaning. It's important again. If you look at the last three champions, Gunther, Sammy. Who was even the champion before Gunther? Don't know. I presume we just bet the Miz or something, you know? Miz or Bobby so Lashley. I'm just going to presume it was Miz. Bobby Lashley gone. An MVP. Yeah, MVP is cooking Call, t- Triple H. Calling people out. He is cooking. Is he like, basically calling them a racist? Yeah. For for why? I don't know. Well, there was zero black talent on SummerSlam. Was there? Yeah. You just throwing the accusation out there or? No. I don't uh, assume people's. I also don't want to assume, but we'll say zero African American talent on SummerSlam. Holy moly! Hmm. Not a great look, because you've got some fantastic talent in the company. A lot of them have left now. 
Well, Bobby Lashley and MVP. Well, no, we talked about Keith Lee. Keith Lee. We talked about Serve. Serve. Bobby Lashley, MVP. Almost. People are saying he's probably gone. Probably gone. Almost. Almost. Almost is almost gone. Like, got rid of Shelton Benjamin. Yeah. Shedrick Alexander's on NXT now with Trick. Carmelo. Carmelo is awesome. Oh, Street Profits. Yeah. They got buried there recently by the bloodline. Yeah. Well, that's probably because Bobby's gone and he was with them. Bianca. Jade. Jade. Naya? Is she... Uh, Don't Simone? want to assume. Don't want to assume. Is she like... Uh, no idea. You can be whatever heritage? you want to be, Naya. Is she Simone Heritage? I don't know like I don't know Yeah, You threw it out there You said it I know I was actually I'd seen MVP yeah. comment on it Oh on SummerSlam Yeah 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 Oh right Slam. okay I thought this was just Oh it wasn't me it was, uh, Sorry I was quoting okay. MVP okay. I don't throw up any controversy okay, okay. I'm a friggin white Irish guy Like you know It's a little I'm, I don't have any um, I'm not the right voice To speak about that do you, do you not have any Anything else Just 100% Irish but if I can, I, I'd say 100% Kilkenny. Yeah, I'm scandalously I'd love family. to. Would you get one of them done? One of those uh, DNA tests. An- an- ancestry. Yeah, yeah. I would, yeah, yeah. Wow, I'm 100% one. Libyan. <laughs> yeah, imagine like. Uh, I don't think I'd like to because, you know, one of my family could get done for like a crime. Oh, yeah, the, years um, ago. What you call it? The the BTK. No, not, not BTK. I'm not saying my family was the Zodiac or the BTK, by the way. Uh, the guy in around California. The BTK killer. No, it wasn't BTK. It was the East Area Rapist or something. I don't think he was the one caught by a family. I thought the BTK guy was caught by a family. Let's go off this. Yeah, well, it's not a serial killer podcast. Huh? Yeah, if we were, we'd be talking about Dexter Loomis. Yeah. The serial killer podcast, they do phenomenal. They do outrageous. People them. are. Maybe we should be doing a serial killer. I podcast. would hate that. I would hate yeah. to delve into you know that what? type of negativity. I know, and then we're here, we're underground. I'd be shitting at walking home. Do you think so? Yeah. Yeah, my, my, my missus is into all that true crime true stuff. True crime stuff. Well, they I, say true crime. It's murder podcasts. Yeah. Like. There's disgraceful behavior going on. I know. It makes me so upset. There's something really. Not all of them. Like, some of them are obviously, like, journalistic in their approach. Oh, they have integrity. But some of them are just, like, pure. Capitalizing bastards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, I had to give up a, a soccer podcast. Because I thought it was too inherently negative, giving out about the, the negatives within the soccer. Because that's what people want to listen to. Like local soccer? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to be negative about people in your hometown. Yeah, but no, like, I just don't like surrounding myself with that negativity anymore. And that's why sometimes when I'm talking about wrestling, I, I, I try and juxtapose, or not juxtapose, I try and say it's it's looking at it from a logical point of view in my head, going, mm. I love that, I love that. That's basically what we're doing. What are the things I like in this? Yeah. Not, I'm here to well, shit no, on everything. Well, no, but we can shit on stuff too. Yeah. Oh, and we're going to get to that. You got to. What do you mean we're going to get There's to that? There's something on this card that I am going to shit on. Look, women are allowed to wrestle <laughs> at wrestling shows now, all right? I'm a big fan of women's wrestling. Big is, fan. is that what you're going to give out about? No. I d- is that I what you're... women's matches on y- this. Is that what you're going to Vinny Mac on? I'm not going to Vinnie Mac on that. You're not going to Vinnie yeah, Mac what about um, MJF's tweet? MJ, I was just like you. You're a, you're a silly boy. Yeah, that was like, he said he said something about Vin, Vin, Vincent McMahon wouldn't let him do that. Someone tweeted him. Yeah, and he said Vincent McMahon would probably make me have sex with a secretary while he shits on her head or something. Yeah, like, like whoa, what's he doing? I know you can never get hired by that company now. Well, no, not well, that look, he can. Not that he. I just I kind of gone off MJF now. He's not clicking for no. me at the moment. He seems like he's a tryhard. It yes, it feels a little stale or something. I'm not fucking leaving. All right, quote Wolf of Wall Street, get a little tattoo. Oh, now you're a heel and now you're saying cool, edgy stuff. Yeah, Ooh, yeah it seems yet. like just a bit... Yeah. Because yeah. particularly when you've got You don't need to curse in every promo. No, no, no. Because you've got Swerve out there, like, and he's just... Like, when you... Let's say you put Swerve and MJF, this current version of MJF on... And this is crazy 12, 18 months ago. If you put them in back-to-back segments, there's only one of them that feels like an absolute superstar world champion. And that's Swerve. MJF just doesn't have that aura at the moment. Mm. If you'd said that 12, 18 months ago, I would have thought you're crazy. There's just something not clicking 
with MJF. Yeah, he, he seems like he's been a tryhard. Like that whole Triple H coming out or coming out in the Triple H gear. Yeah, yeah, all and that. Everything just felt a bit forced. Well, it's been like that for a while with that. Like, I hated that face run. That stuff with Adam Cole I found just so corny and bad and that's real that real it's left it left such a bad taste in my mouth that along with that fucking video game doesn't like the video game i hate that did you ever play it no. did you get for free on the playstation plus pass no. after i spent a hundred quid on a game that wasn't even fucking finished i'm a big playstation fan i play a lot of playstation i uh, don't that's the day i like supporting irish re- or wrestling. wrestling yeah i yeah. like supporting wrestling uh, Sorry, little fraudulent slip. I like sporting Irish wrestling too. Oh, do, do, Go check out the OTT, OTT documentary. That's Scrapper what, next week. Yeah, Joe gave me this. That's for, very nice. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's a lovely top. You gave it to me after we did. And we're going to Scrapper next week. Yeah, we're going to uh, Over the Top Wrestling Scrapper Mania. Go check it out on demand in the next few days. Matthew yeah. Macklin getting it up in about three, four days. He's an insane man. And that's madness. In fairness to him. Like, even, how long does it take us to edit this podcast? You'll probably the be same seeing. The same time it takes Matthew Macklin to edit an entire wrestling show. Yeah, you'll probably be seeing this podcast. Uh, I don't know, in fairness, Matthew. Yeah, he'll have it up for Scrapper. Matthew and Matthew. Is that what all wrestling editors are called? You have to be called Matthew. Yes. Yeah, Matthew. Place of entry. Matthew, we love you. Insert something here. There we go. That was nice. Right. Um, uh, what was next? Oh, Naya and... No, was it LA? Oh, sorry, LA Knight and Logan Paul. Yeah. Yeah, really good. I hate Logan Paul as a person. You're into it. When you see no, Machine no, Gun outside Kelly... outside of wrestling, I hate him as When it? you see Machine Gun Kelly, you're like, ah, you're a twat. Stop hanging around with Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah, I don't like Machine Gun Kelly. Uh, the actual match itself, though... Um, good, I'll tell you one thing. I've seen someone say online in the IWC, they compared LA Knight to DDP because he's old because he's older he's extremely underrated in ring which yeah. I think he is he's a lot better than he's getting some, credit he for he does some cool shit does like some cool that, shit. that jump from the second rope to the top rope yeah. without looking into the elbow drop you're like like he's <laughs> underrated as a worker he's very charismatic and all that and uh, it was definitely the right booking because you can do lots of other you know when he when, when he came out in Logan's car that was good. And he, he, I, th- I was like, he's not going to break the window. And then he didn't break the window. Yeah. At the first go. And then he did. Yeah, he's he got big, there. He's a big, muscly, beefy boy. He's a strong man. Comes out. Uh, and in Logan Paul's own gaff as well. He's from Cleveland, I believe, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah. By way of Puerto Rico. Um, I just hate Logan Paul. As and person. so do the people in Cleveland. Yeah. And that's his hometown. That's a piece of shit. It just goes to show how great LA Nice uh, is. Yeah. But I, they, I do. I think when Logan Paul debuted in WWE, it was at, on a show in Cleveland, and he got booed. Mm. Yeah, but he, like there was that. There was that. Kind of, he was kind of face when he went for a while. When he so went to the blood. They bloodline. tried to debut him as a face, and they tried to play with that a few different times. He's just an inherently unlikable person. Leave him as a heel. You want to see him being beaten up? Like, yeah, that's when the whole... when he got that uh, neck breaker onto the table, and it yeah. didn't break. I was like, that looks sore for him, and you know, I'm I happy like that. Yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, the, it's great for LA Knight though to get that kind of a moment on one of the big four pay per views, and it not feel like it didn't feel like a, a a moment. Like remember years ago, and they gave was it Heath Slater one of them. Uh, yeah, yeah, him and Rhino the tag team titles. Yeah, and it felt like Zack Ryder got the Intercontinental, Intercontinental title laugh. WrestleMania. WrestleMania. Did it take? He dropped it off somewhere the next night. Like, it didn't feel like that for LA Knight. It felt like we have fairly solid plan for this guy going forward as our upper mid card champion. Yeah, it was very cool to hear Big E after it mm. uh, on the post. He was like, you know, we can talk about LA Knight, but let's talk about Sean Ricker. Let's talk about Eli Drake. Let's talk about Max Dupree. Let's talk about all these people. Dudes put the work in. That was, everywhere. yeah, you know what I mean? He yeah. was all these people before he was LA Knight. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, like, I don't like the uh, thing. I've done. I'm not the target audience for his. You're a yeeter, are you? Oh, I hate that too. No. I hate. Are you, da- are you going to all in? Uh, I need to talk to the director of the play we're doing, Dunphy. It's on the weekend before the play. Oh. But I do want to go. Are you going to be one of them little yesers? Yes. Uh, yes. 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 He's going to leave AEW anyway and go back to WWE. He'll probably do a run. He'll be good. Um, the match itself then, you know, there was a, there was some really cool moments mm. in it. That 
dive that Logan did. I thought he does. I thought he was going to head. I thought yeah. he was going to head uh, Max, but he the, the way he was able to do that and twist his body. Mm. I know it's been done before because Triple H was like, I've never seen it be done before. It's been done. It's been before. done. Hibusa maybe. Yeah. But he oh, just Hibusa probably did it twice ju- in one match. Jumped up, did a backflip, and I was like, man, this. He's is outrageously athletic. It's insane. It's like he's really good. I hate him. <laughs> Any other thoughts on the match? No, just right man won. Are you, Best uh, match up to this point so far. The was it the the buckshot into he was going for the clothesline from the yeah buckshot that was cool. into, that was that was a great reversal yeah. into the finish. Logan's foot under the rope though. Yeah, it felt like that. They were obviously trying to leave because what like with Logan now he'll probably disappear for a couple of months come back can do another rematch with LA Knight two three months down the line what do you make of uh, Logan's run in general as, as US champ like really good like in fairness it's had a good run I know some people have complained about hasn't he wrestled two matches every week. he hasn't defended the title that much but he's wrestled more matches he wrestled Cody for the world title yeah, but he's only defended the US title twice. Yeah. Sorry, I, 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 I've had some water. Oh, there it is. I, I don't mind, like, sometimes not defending titles too much mm. makes it Keep hydrated. feel Yeah, we were saying, you, you have this, uh, you have this um, kind of boxing feel. Like, in, in MMA, they don't defend the title every fucking month. But yeah. this isn't MMA, this is wrestling. This is wrestling. But I said this, like, ages ago, with AEW in particular, when they were, like, you know, this is years ago, in early days, I was like... Don't defend your world title more than six times a year. Should be nearly a two-month gap. Is that why title. Romans was so impressive? In some ways, yeah. I know people give out about it, but then also because that was Roman and he had finally got into that part where he got it, the yeah, aura, aura thing. Um, so this is a fucking word that's coming into our yeah vernacular of wrestle speak, and I don't like it. Oh, he has aura. Oh, he has aura. It's, it's, not it's called charisma. charisma. It's called right? Riz. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Imagine Christian Riz. was called Captain Riz. Oh, I love it. No, Skip Riz. <laughs> hey, Skip Riz. Um, but yeah, no, it, it was. Yeah, good like, do, do you think the, the foot under the rope was intentional, though? Yeah, I think they'll get back to that in two, three months. Time. Or do you the think that they'll retcon it and be like, yeah, no, uh, his foot wasn't under the rope, so we're going to use this as an out for LA night? Oh, that'd be shit. Who does Ellen Lake want to face? This is the issue. Santos Escobar. Like, this is the issue. There's nobody primed on SmackDown <laughs> for that position. See, you didn't mean that, did you? I did. No, you, no. No. <laughs> it was good though, isn't it? Yeah, what do you make of the, the, the prime in the center and, then, and then the sponsors I, on the site? I fucking despise it. Wingstop prime and some other nonsense. I didn't notice it until uh, Logan went down to kiss his prime. I and I was like, it. I hate the hydration station. Oh, I think the hydration station should be a new Spanish announce table. Yes. Where people get put through it all the time yeah. and I mean put through it don't yeah, get like thrown into put through it put through the fucking Bottles hydration of station. hydration going everywhere yeah uh, no I hate the fact that the ring has now become just another advertising thing this is one of Vince's things yeah, he, he never, never allowed wanted, that. He wanted the ring clean I, I w- agree with him I was looking around because he never even really had like a Wrestlemania sign in the middle of the ring no you know or like a, a bad blood sign or it was whereas clean WCW ring. used to always have the canvas yeah. that have the name of the pay-per-view on the it's canvas or ECW ring. like I seen a brilliant thing there a while ago and it was but the, you watch New Japan yeah they have fucking sponsors all over that thing. I know I don't like that either like I was watching a while ago and it was do you know the really famous overhead shot of Muhammad Ali after knocking the guy out yeah yeah it's jolly uh, and so someone, listeners. someone put a lot of uh, yeah, but no, it was uh, a side by side with one of the recent UFC pay per views where there was a big knockout in the main event, and they got the same camera shot mm. of the guy walking away and the guy flat out in the ground. And the, the UFC ring was just like forty seven different sponsors, and the Muhammad Ali one was just clean. I was like, this is why it's such like that iconic image is just perfect, and you can't have that when. Bloody Prime and Wingstop, Chicken Wing Company yeah, are on you your know, map. You know what you can have though. Chicken wings. You I know, love chicken wings. You know what you can have though. Mm-hmm. When you see that shot, you can go. 
I'd love me some chicken wings right now. And that's exactly why it's there. I know. I know. I'm going to need, it's I'm gonna funny, need to get right? some well, when, reaching up here. When I lived in the Middle East, there was a wing stop that delivered in the area where I lived. I haven't had wings in like 10 years more. Here, what? Born in or boneless? Oh, I'll be bone in all oh, the time. All the time. <laughs> no, I don't know what that means. Like with bones or how can yeah. you get boneless wings? Oh, they're unreal. They're nuggets. Yeah. That's what it is. It's an, that's what a boneless wing is. It's a nugget. Yeah, it's unreal. I do love the wing stop. Speaking of, you know, we fall down the rabbit hole that we want us to fall well, down. We see? We're talking about wing stop. No, that's exactly. And now they've got free advertising yeah. on this very listened to watched podcast. Yeah, for our all... 27 people <laughs> are going to watch this during the week are going to order wing stop but we just enjoy talking wrestling yeah and uh, we enjoy watching wrestling um are, wait, are you still drinking as this is going on like when you get home uh, from the pub are you still like do you have a few brewskis with you yeah because my problem when i had the problem I'll, i like i'd forget everything that happened no, I didn't. So this was Saturday night. I had I was had a very sensible night out with a small group of friends, and we. Did, it wasn't a hectic. I had like yeah. So when you get home, yeah, I'm not asking you to. No, I had just a couple to f- of beers in the pub, and then like two, three beers watching the show. Yeah, like I would. I remember watching WrestleManias and Royal Rumbles. Oh, and sometimes no shit fest that I'd have yeah. to like. I'd have no idea. Yeah, there's some of them where like like what that. Happened, yeah. like this one I had like over the course of. Several hours I had like six beers. Or like, do you remember when Sammy and Roman Reigns had that big melodramatic thing? Was it Royal Rumble? Uh, no, it was the no, one. They had it at the Royal Rumble where. Oh, sorry, yeah, with the chair shot. And, yeah, with yeah, Kevin yeah. Owens and all that. Apparently, one of my mates is up watching it with me and like had videoed my reaction because I was like, oh my God, what is happening? I had no recollection of, of what happened. I had, to watch, I had to watch the fucking Royal Rumble again the next day. Jeez. That's yeah, why no, I don't no. drink anymore. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> no, I, had, uh, I was very sensible last night. No, I wasn't sensible. If this was last night, I won't remember a single thing from the show. Devil, yeah. You, div- you little div- devil. Yeah. So what did I, I probably had two bottles of beer watching the show. Okay. Um, Maybe three. Yeah, would you appreciate more ads in it now so you can get up and go for your little piss? In the uh, no, I could have done with less ads <laughs> and got the thing over 20 minutes earlier. Yeah, so I could have was, slept. I was, I was very tired. Um, I, I, I thought that there was absolutely no way that I was going to stay up and watching it. Mm. I nearly drifted off during the next match, which is Bailey and Naya. Yeah, look, I just I struggle with Naya's style at the best of times. Yeah. But she's different to everybody else there. I know, and she's made improvements. She she's she's the one that you could look at going, right, she's going to challenge Rhea. I know, but I don't feel like, why is she the champion? We're because she, win she, she won, like. I know, but the whole Tiffany Stratton stuff at the end annoyed me. Like, Bailey's so good. Just leave the title on her. Bailey's run was poor. It wasn't great, but sure. Like, it was a great crowning moment for her, but yeah. it was poor. But the, this is a problem with the women's division in WWE. They never build up challengers. They built up Nia. They just had her win a tournament. And they built up Bailey as a challenger too. That was good. But that was like, again, one of their... And they're going to, like... Their way of building up challengers, right? Nia wins a tournament. Fair enough. Grant, whatever. right? But she'd been doing not a whole lot for a long time before that. And she then, fucking main evented fucking uh, over in Perth against Rhea. Yeah, that's true. So she, she has been that. doing stuff. Yeah, she yeah. lost it. But you Where, know, what, did, was she fired for a while? She was. Yeah. Yeah, she came back. She got brought back. Um, but they, I hate the storyline going into this. You're clumsy. You hurt people. Yeah, I so get. What? I'm I, a fighter. Yeah, this is what I'm meant to do. Yeah, yeah. Like it makes I hate and AW do this sometimes too. To break the fourth wall. Break the fourth wall as part of their storyline. It's like fuck off, like. Oh, you're clumsy. You break people's noses in the ring. Yeah, I'm a fighter. I should break. That's what I'm meant to be doing. I'm going to break your nose. Yeah, the fact that you can't do that to me shows that you're a weak ass motherfucker. Yeah, I just think a lot of the time, like, it's very clear where they're going next. They're going to tease this Tiffany Stratton cashing in on Naya for uh, probably an ungodly amount of time. I am beginning to hate the money in the bank concept. I hate it. I like it's something like I like something like the King in the Ring. Yeah, where win a tournament, get a title shot. Like remember when Lesnar did it, and then they stopped doing it. Lesnar won it in two thousand and two, yeah. and was like, "Okay, he's the King of the Ring." Now they're going to have to put him in the world title match. Yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah, but you win a big tournament with a lot of other good workers, you should get a title shot. Money in the bank, though. I hate. It. 
Because it's so tired now. It's so tired. They need to change it up. They do the same shit every year. There's always someone teasing for months on end. I didn't know. Maybe they're friends with the champion and I got the briefcase. It's nearly 20 years. It is, yeah. uh, Of of having it. I think, was it 2004, 6? No, 2004 was WrestleMania 20. So, yeah, 2005. The WrestleMania one, 21, 21 was the first briefcase that edge one yeah fuck and then he cashed in in 2006 but then you know yeah we have two now two two is too many I say this about the Royal Rumble as well but like, then now they're going to like there was talks of going two nights now Royal Rumble's going to go two nights won't it because well, Summer SummerSlam, Slam is, SummerSlam is going surely Royal Rumble could fuck me so much wrestling we're going to be in here reviewing shit for hours <laughs> like, hours yeah, that's, me why, and you, that's why we're not taking notes anymore I know but me and you can't get a review show done in under two hours because we're stupid yeah but that's when we had notes and now I we know. don't have notes now we're just glossing over we're not like yeah Going when, when, yeah, the, yeah, when yeah. they got that hammer lock now you know I was thinking yeah we were getting too detailed yeah it was ridiculous but now we're going on mad tangents every five minutes instead because we don't have notes How about wings of chicken wings and all sorts yeah but this is the real us I know. We're yeah. just chatting wrestling. We're just chatting wrestling. And none of us are wearing pants. And yeah, I haven't worn pants in months. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the power bomb that Bailey did, that was pretty cool. That was very cool. She was stepping out and he was like, yeah. she's struggling here. She, yeah, but she, I don't know if she was struggling or not. It looked like she was struggling, as it should. Mm. And it felt extremely impactful. Yeah. Boom. That's because... What do you think of the finish? More interference, fuck me. Yeah, I did. So, well, see, the, mm. that's what annoyed me. The oh, so there the was bank. a ring post. Was there? Yeah. Now you ran into the ring post, shoulder first. Don't for fuck. The third match in a row. Don't fuck. Um, the, yeah, the money in the bank thing. I, I just, I don't like it as a concept anymore. It didn't help the match see, whatsoever. See, it. I'm gonna chill like this. How, how do I look? Do I look like chilled talking wrestling? Yeah, you look chilled. Talking wrestling. Can yeah. you hear me properly? Yeah, the pants still off. Yeah, pants still off. I'm more, like I said, March twenty was last Good. time I wore a pair of pants. Yeah, I think we're a lot more comfortable here without the without like, Dunphy in our ear, like the aggressive, uh, the aggressive one. Yeah, why is he so aggressive? I don't know. I don't understand it. I like, get it. like he's making it like he's acting like he's the aggrieved part. Did he watch he even watch SummerSlam? I don't know. Does he like wrestling? Does he even watch wrestling? No, I think he was just doing this because he thought he could have friends. But then. yeah, yeah, <laughs> that blew up in his face. Mm. You know? I don't know. Apparently, there's a few dumb maniacs out there. I don't know why. <laughs> and this is the most shocking thing of all. <laughs> um, Dumpy has more fans than we do. No, well, Burns. Well, Burns the workers us, like us. you. Yeah, see. that's true. That's true. <laughs> Actually, a very nice gentleman approached me in Clears the other night called Neil. Yeah, all right. He said, I recognize you from the podcast. And he said to me, and I quote, you have the most sensible takes. You do? Yes. Bullshit. Swear to God. Fucking. Shout out, Neil. No. Yeah. Neil and Burnsy. My kind of guys. There's no one like Marta. I, Marta's my favorite. Well, I did say back to him. I said, are you getting me mixed up with Marta? No. Yeah. In my mind. Yeah. Well, because Dar- Darren was like, Marta's just a fucking. Like an absolute well of knowledge. Yeah. You know I'm saying. It's nuts. He just pulls out like some. Like we were saying, joking earlier, mid south 1980s. Remember? Biff Busick. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what? Biff Busick. What the fuck? Remember him? Yeah. Like he... No. See his text message earlier on. Salvatore Sincere. What? <laughs> Why are you bringing this name up? I haven't thought about this, man. Remember, there was a fucking wrestler... What was he called? Pug? In the new generation, there was a wrestler Pug? I don't remember him. He would. He's put in a link to a tag team page for remember Hacksaw when, Jim Duggan and Super Crazy. Yeah, remember when Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Super Crazy were a tag team? John, no. why are you thinking about this on a bank holiday Monday? Yeah, it's two o'clock on a bank holiday Monday. So why are you thinking about Hacksaw, Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Super Crazy? As a tag team. Sensational. That was the thing. Yeah. It was. Um, Okay, so the finish then when... How the fuck does Naya do that? Without actually crushing. Yeah, I don't know. Her bonsai drop is a lot worse than Yokozuna's bonsai drop. They did have a... The one she... um, The one she did to Lyra. That I think that was kind of accident. Like, she kind of slipped a bit, did she? That looked real sore. She crushed her. Like, she killed her. She's dead now. I've seen her since. Oh, she was on SmackDown, but... Was it her? Was it her? Was it her? Um, yeah, look, Nia's champion. Does nothing for me. I like Bailey. Don't yeah, but that's the thing. Wrestling can't always do something for you. You know? Look, I know that too. Yeah, there has to be people like, that you don't like and you don't appreciate. I think we've got a lot of... A lot of stuff that people... See, wanted or expected maybe to happen. A lot of big things happened. This was an angle show. 
Was it? No, well, there was, there was, this was... No, incredible. every match was about forwarding storylines rather than paying off storylines in my mind. Bron and Sammy? Except Bron and Sammy. That was LA the, and Logan? I, the, with the leg under the ropes thing, and that was up to this point, best match on the show. Nia and Bailey is forward storylines, I suppose, with the interference. With, with, Rom and... The men, Rom. Rom. Rhea and Liv. Rhea and Liv was... Why are they going to call them Liv Dom or Dom Liv? Or they'll call them something weird. They will want to. Well, we'll get more onto that with future match on the card, I think. Okay, so the next match. Uh, I hated this match. You're a piece of shit. I was. How the fuck? I was. Do you even like wrestling? I love wrestling. Do you even? No, but do you I, love it? No, like I love it. I was infuriated. You were infuriated there. I was in. I was furious watching this. You were, you were furious. Yeah, I'm sitting back up for this match. Sit back up. Yeah, let's get our fucking shoulders back now and let's have yeah. a let's have a proper discussion I here because despised you despised this match. What did you there? Like why? Okay. Okay, to put into context, this is the Drew McIntyre CM Punk match with Seth Rollins as special guest referee that we're talking about. I like about. CM Punk, a little homage to Bret Hart. Hart. And, yeah. you know, there was this whole. Because we had discussed they're, they're going to do the SummerSlam. SummerSlam 97 90, thing. 97, yeah. And they're going to have the spit and someone's going to get hit with the chair. Who's playing The Undertaker? Probably Drew, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I hated the match. Right. Here's why, right? Okay. This was their WWE's best feud of the year. By Country Mile. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. it was maybe slightly repetitive, but still fantastic. I don't think it was slightly repetitive. Well, like, think about it, one of the, One of these guys couldn't wrestle. Yeah, I know. And this is what... It That's was, why it was it, so good. Yeah, it was incredibly inventive. Mm. So it started at the Royal Rumble with... Punk getting injured and then they said it was Drew, Drew's move that injured him I don't know if that's actually true or it not it is um, well, that's yours thanks and they found ways of constantly increasing the heat in this storyline for eight months seven months whatever it was and it was brilliant and when I was thinking about this show in advance I was like this show on paper doesn't really do much for me now this is a great show on paper to me except for it's not I the Tokyo cannot though. wait for Punk and Drew. I can't wait for it. And then the match descended into a farce. Instantly. <laughs> a farce. Wait, no, no. Hold on now. Instantly. They started off hot. They started off no, with They started off hot. Throwing slaps at each other. They started off hot. Yeah. But before the bell was even rang, Seth Rollins was dancing in the ring. That's him. That's Seth Rollins. That's his Why gimmick. Why is he there? That's his gimmick. Why is he there? He has been an integral part of it. Why is he there? Because the heat was originally with Rollins and Punk. Yeah, he did got shoehorned him back in the last and, few weeks. And he, he, what do you mean? he was there for WrestleMania. He lost the title to Drew at WrestleMania. Yeah. And he was there then. They had a... It was a priest and... Okay, who has beef with who? Punk has beef with Drew. Drew has beef with Punk. Both of them kind of like... Punk had beef with Rollins, Rollins has beef with Punk. Separate beefs. Drew has beef with Rollins, Rollins has beef with Punk. Why, uh, Even though he said at the end of the rest of going, you deserve it. It doesn't need to be in this match. Charles. Like, why not? Like, because these... Like, I wanted to see the two of them kill each other because they so had a punk feud so for seven Rollins. months. So did, and that was the intriguing part. Rollins wanted Fucking them. Fucking watch it on the telly like the rest of us. No, but he wanted to be a part of it. He was like... Just oh, go out and get So if I can show the scrapper you, next he, week. You said you wanted to kill him. Why go on? You haven't done enough. I thought that was a cool line. What there was some cool stuff in what the match. Night, what annoyed me, me was they've been feuding for eight months. They've finally got their hand on each other. Why are they going for pin so early? Yeah. Why is Drew do you want to win or do you want to kill the guy? Yeah, why is Drew trying to pin CM Punk And then later in the match, when they have each other dead, neither of them go for a pin. Stupid. It was a stupid match. It was a stupid match. It was stupid. No, it I was like stupid. I did the I whole hate. the whole bracelet <laughs> thing. Like stupid. Triple H was talking. Shut up. <laughs> Triple H was talking about it at the end of the post match. He was like, you know, that's that was drama. That was world class. He, he said oh, the you know all over a fifty cent bracelet and all this kind of what, thing. What Punk's dog made it in a bloody arts and crafts class or something, was it? <laughs> yeah, Punk's dog went to school and yeah, made a bracelet. Made a bracelet. And gave it to Punk over gave, breakfast. Yeah, and he said, "This is for you, Dad." Yeah. 
and then punk. I uh, hated this match. Like, like, okay. And I don't know if it was you said it to me or someone else. You look, Punk's coming back from a long layoff. Hasn't had a singles me. match since. I was trying to calm you down. He was, yeah, he was, was hitting me up on the WhatsApps. <laughs> and you, you mentioned he hasn't actually had a, a singles match, really, since, since Samoa Joe, all yeah. in last year. And I said, yeah, fair enough. But speaking of Samoa Joe, do you remember, or would you do because we spoke about it before, the main event of WWE's Great Balls of Fire pay-per-view? Yeah, Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar. Seven minutes. Beat the living shit out of each other. Yeah. That's what this match should have been. Yeah. They should have beat the shit out of each other for seven minutes and a referee should have counted one, two, three. Not Seth Rollins and then play the WWE referee. No, but this gives... if Whoever would have won or lost, it gives them an out as well. So it, Stop it's, giving people outs when they lose. But, no, no, but you have to think about some of that thing in the story. Drew like gained nothing from this win. He's no bigger. He has, he has a win now over Punk. I know, which, but he, he, which he can laud over CM Punk. But he's Punk. not more important listen, listen after now, this win. Now, Drew has a win over Punk, right? Yeah. Which he can laud over Punk. Rollins can say, I helped you get that win over Punk. I counted the one, two, three. Mm-hmm. So that's Drew and Rollins there. Then you have Punk going with the two of them saying, you fucked me over. You have a fake win. You have a fake win. You didn't beat me. Rollins can be like, I didn't fuck you over. You messed yourself up by doing this. Now, you've yeah. just created loads of matches there. You Those matches were created anyway. But th- and also, you've got three hours of Raw tomorrow night. Yeah, where they and can go... Well, it's tonight. Start you tonight. And now we're going to find can, out what's going to happen. Yeah, it's you didn't need to do all this to create more matches. That match should not have been done right. as a vehicle for more matches. Say it, say it, but it's the first match of their fucking feud. I know. So it, and I, you yeah. go straight to a special guest referee, stupid, all bullshit. It's going to build from here now. Like, to me, what would have been better, right? You go in... Let's say Punk has cardio issues because he hasn't actually worked full match in X amount of time. Fine. You do your Brock Lesnar, Samoa Joe, they beat the shit out of each other for seven minutes. McIntyre wins clean. Tonight then on Raw, it's tonight, isn't it? Punk comes out and is like, I've been out of the ring for a year. I was fucked. I need to get like, I need to get back on the horse. I Re- need to build the up. Repeat the AEW storyline. It's not a repeating the AEW storyline. Yes, that's why you, I, I've been out with the horse for uh, 10 years and then he's going to start fucking fighting Darby Allen and having close contests with them yeah, and give him close. Give him four matches on Raw the next four weeks and then he no, said, right, true. No, I'm fucking ready no, for you No, treat him like a fucking superstar that he is. Make him wrestle. Treat him like a superstar that he is. This didn't treat him like a superstar. It made him look like a fucking idiot. idiot. When he turns that around and he sees Seth wearing the bracelet yeah. and he's all like, oh my God, why did you pick the bracelet off the ground? He, put thought, it on he, your thought, wrist. he thought he was fucking with him. He thought he was part yeah. of, He thought it was him so and Drew. So he's like, huh? Yeah. I'm a dumb baby face. No. He thought it was him and Drew uh, teaming together against him to con- 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 connive against him. Because there was something in the next match that was really smart. No, no, no. Really don't never be do. fucking skipping over into the skipping, next match. But You're like, skipping now. It was logically stupid. They've made CM Punk in that match look like an idiot. And I don't think no, Drew think got they, what he could get from a CM Punk win. They made him look... They made Punk... Or Punk was made look silly. This was booking malpractice. It wasn't booking, booking malpractice. It fucking was. Fucking sue him then, Morrow. I'm going, to, I'm going to get smart Mark where... Starting, Starting and we're going to sue for booking malpractice. Fucking do! It drove me mad because I just wanted to see two deadly wrestlers beat the shit out of each other. Yeah, and you know what? You'll pay to see it now again. I will get it again when they're in, when they're in like, hell in a cell. I feel do we, uh, they are going to hell in a cell, and they're going to have a deadly hell in a cell exactly. match. Exactly. If they're allowed to have a deadly hell in a cell match, and they will be. They were given done no favors here, and going into it, this was the biggest and best looking it match. It should have been more violent. Yes. Right. It should have been more violent, maybe less uh, melodramatic. This probably shouldn't have gone for as many pins, but I don't, I, I understand what they were trying to do. Yeah, yeah. And in art, you don't always like, fucking hit. And, and you don't always like, get a hit. Do What I'm saying, I'm infuriated by the match. The three people in the match all performed really well. Mm. Like CM Punk, for a guy, looked great. He for, did, didn't he? He, he did looked quite fantastic. muscular. He did, yeah. Uh, he performed really well. Drew, brilliant as always. Seth Rollins, I actually thought, was good in the role. Like, his interactions... I do not like Seth Rollins. Do I not? Mm. Uh, I don't like his, like, over-the-top gimmick. I think this is... This is... Because do you I, like him? Yeah. 
for years, just before the, remember when he started having a bit of a mental breakdown before Coney came? Yeah, he had a pure existential crisis yeah, there for a while. Yeah, I was like, that's when I looked at him, Seth Rollins and went, he has it now. He's he's brilliant. Like, he's got it. Don't Beforehand, like it. I thought he was a really good wrestler, just a bad character. Now it was like he has it. I thought his like interactions with the wrestlers during the match were really good and all. I thought everyone played their part that they were given for that match. Every now and again, he'd do a, do a count out when they're outside. Yeah, and they're laying on the ropes and all, it was funny. And I was like, yeah, look, this is good. Like, it was a he good... He should have let them hit him with the chair. It was a good match that I despised Punk. because it wasn't the type of match that they should have had. Yeah, but it wasn't a hardcore match either. Like. No, no, but they, like the set... Or I keep going back to the Brock and Joe match from WWE's Great Balls of Fire uh, pay-per-view. Fuck that wasn't hardcore either. Is. That was just like... Two heated guys beat the shit out of each other for seven minutes and we got a winner. Yeah, people were pissed off as well. Pissed off to Joe Lost because he feels super hot at the time. Yeah. But, and then uh, lost, se- like lost in seven minutes. Yeah. It was like that same Rick- Ricochet that was, lost to fucking Brock Lesnar in like two minutes. And yeah, and also at the time, uh, poor um, Kofi Kingston lost to Lesnar and it's lost the title to Lesnar. But like the Joe Brock one, do you remember that? Like the two of them were fighting in the corner like 90 seconds into the match and they were bucking and sweat because they were hitting each other so hard. I felt like that's what this one should have been. And then like that still builds future matches down the line. You still then, you go, right, God, jeez, they did a sprint. And then, you know, Drew Cotton with the Claymore. And then the next time... Should have been blood. You know, I didn't think they needed to do it in the first match. Because they already did blood though. Like when, yes, when blood. he was... Before, well, like this is before? The this is they're all off punk for a, a in, month or yeah, so. Yeah, he was in it? Chicago or whatever. Yeah. This was you put me out for eight months. Yeah, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna I'm gonna take my pound of flesh. That's what he said. Mm. And, and it, Drew like, McIntyre's like, you cost me you the two, one thing, the, two world titles, the one basically. thing, and one of them was in my hometown, and the other was at WrestleMania. Yeah, and they didn't. Yeah, and this was my issue with the match. It wasn't that this was a bad wrestling match because it, it wasn't a it wasn't bad wrestling fight. match. It was comparative, not in terms of my disappointment because I was so looking forward to it in a sense. But Triple H and Randy Orton WrestleMania 25, the match yeah. did not equate to the feud. To the feud, yeah. That, this is my issue with the match. I was like, who put this together in this way at this time? You just got the idea of it so wrong for me. And I was, that was the match I was most looking forward to on the card. I, I appreciate they tried to layer it. Yeah, and like there was some stuff new, in there. Like some nuance with the bracelets and yeah. the, oh, I'm going to take this out and, now. And uh, oh, no, Rollins has, what are you doing? Are you trying to fuck with me? Kind of. Yeah, rock. like I just feel like CM Punk is such a master storyteller that like any other direction than the one they were given would have been better. Like CM Punk is the master storyteller in wrestling. Then you don't like Punk. I don't like. You don't like Phil. I don't like Phil. Yeah. I don't like Phil Brooks. Yeah, look, I cannot like CM Punk and think he's one of the best I appreciate ever. The like, you know what I mean? Like, you look at some of the stuff he's done. Like, there's like at the top of my top ten favorite wrestling moments ever. Punk's probably in three, three of them. Man, man can't do no elbow drop though. No, because very bad, isn't it? Man is so bad at elbow. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, but like. Why like is Punk, 44? No, but he was always... He, was he could never do a good he, elbow. He lands with his legs first. Yeah, yeah. Instead of, like... Uh, and at the same time as the elbow making contact. Yeah. Look like, I, I was looking at when Bailey did it to Naya. Bailey does a great elbow drop. But, uh, and, like, it didn't look like a hurt Naya at all, but it still looked good. Yeah. Mio Sky. Mio? No, Mio? no Mio? Kyrie San. Kyrie San. The insane elbow drop. That's insane. But when you're thinking about, like, proper good elbow drops, you know, you think... Of Perry Saturn Justy said that to yeah. me before when I was trying to learn watch elbow Perry drops. Saturn it's like Perry Saturn's elbow drop is badass and you look at it and it's badass Macho Man badass elbow drop great elbow drop Bailey great elbow drop <laughs> Macho Man in his later years just like I am protecting you here <laughs> I'm just because if I protect you I hurt myself but CM Punk bad elbow drop yeah but like Punk isn't the cleanest, crispest wrestler in the world. Oh, he, I, he, he's, I watched him do back rolls when he was coming back for his return. I think there was a, like a little documentary up on WWE Network or on YouTube. Mm. And he was in there with five NXT people. And like back rolls is a big staple of wrestling oh. training. It's like to warm up and yeah. all that and to control your body. Yeah. 
Motherfucker can't do no back row. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, seriously? You do, you do it for jiu-jitsu as well. Yeah? Yeah, for like warming up your neck and stuff. Oh, man, yeah. couldn't do no back roll. I was like, what, what? <laughs> That's mad, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> like, like a veteran. Like. like there's some cool people doing back rolls. Like Trick Williams can do it and he can flip oh, up. And, anything, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And like other people doing wide legged and mm. that kind of thing. Punk just looked like he fell on his ass and rolled over the side. Yeah. Like he's not, you don't watch punk for crisp wrestling. You watch punk for dramatic storytelling. Yeah. And grit. That's what you like about him. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same what I like about Cody as well. Like there's yeah, a, I do, Cody isn't Chris Bader, but there's, there's, an, a, ed, there's, there's an emotion. A, there's an edge to what Cody, like, I think I said it to Dunphy before. Do you know what you said about Rollins getting it? Yeah. Recently. Punk and Cody are just guys, they're not the best wrestlers in the world, but they get it. Mm. And they know how to extract the maximum amount of tension, emotion, mm. and drama. I remember when Cody, uh, I think it was against Jericho, remember they had that match where if Cody lost, he could never fight yeah. the title. Yeah, that was awesome. And Cody dove over the top row, but landed on his face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember thinking... That looked like it fucking hurt, and he definitely did not mean to do that. It wasn't supposed to go like that. Yeah, yeah. but that's also why I like him because mm. you know he it's just not it, 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 seem, it seemed like oh, it was a desperate move to yeah, you know, yeah. I have to do it. I have to do this, and boom, and it failed. I, I know I'm not good at it, but I have to do it because yeah. it'll help. Yeah, Cody's a master. Like, and like, I'm just gonna go to the top of well. this fucking cage, and I'm, this is a big cage, and I'm gonna do a moonsault off it. Yeah. I might miss. <laughs> and I might miss. And it's not going to look like um, yeah, Kurt Angle. Or, yeah, or like Kurt Angle. Or it's not, I'm not, when I'm doing a dive over the top, I'm not going to look like Ray Phoenix. No. I'm going to look like a big flying piece of mass in the yeah, air. Yeah. And that's what I like about Cody. Yeah. Like, yeah, cool. even even his, like, you know, his. There's an Cody earn, Carter, earnestness. Yeah. To his. Uh, and same with Punk. Yeah. But just maybe stop doing elbow drops. And also. Because you're fucking your hips, man. Don't let anyone else lay out your match. Don't let him do that to you, punk. Yeah, that was okay. Shit. So where are they going from here? Uh, well, I would imagine we're going to... Drew is going to do a thing over the next few months where he's like, I don't... You know, I'm done with punk. Whatever, yeah, I'm not wrestling. Does punk middle. come after Rollins now? I don't know. Like, there's obviously, you know, we're going to get a series series of matches between... So why would punk come after Rollins? Because, like, he has... He must have seen back the footage that Rollins hey, look, just picked it up and he was like, I let, I let it get the better of me, but Rollins can be... We all know that wrestlers don't watch the footage back and they make grave assumptions. And um, But I think what we end up with this is uh, Punk and Drew Hell in a Cell. It's the only feud to me that feels like it. Does Punk won. win the feud? I think he kind of needs that. Why do you bring Punk back paying millions and not have him go over in his first measure feud? Does he beat Gunther? Please, God, no. Oh, God, no. God, don't do that. Punk win the Rumble beats Gunther? Oh, I'd hate that. You, really? do, you do have to do Punk Roman at some stage. Punk, yeah, well, that's down the line. Punk yeah. Gunther is... More... Pressing. Yeah. Oh, God, please, God, Punk doesn't beat Gunther. I think that's a terrible idea. Why? Because I also don't think they should have had Punk beat Hangman that time in AEW. I don't think... Hangman was a terrible champion. Yeah, because they cut the legs off him for Punk. Um, uh, no, I don't think Punk should win the title off Gunter. Who should he win it off? Should he win Drew. it? If he's going to win it. So Drew, be, it. Drew beats Gunter. Maybe... It could I, go I, I, roundabout way, I don't know. I would like Gunter to lose it soon and Just win the Royal Rumble. And, and then challenge Cody. Cody. I'd lo love to see that. Man. I think Gunter and Cody are there too. That would be fantastic. Yeah, it'd be class. I'd like to see maybe The Rock come back. And wrestle Roman. And that wrestle Roman. Cody to wrestle Gunter. And that means uh, there's two titles as well in that phase. How would Rock get the world heavyweight title? He could I come up with a way. He needs a title, does it? Yeah, it would be fun though. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I don't know. It kind of feels like you'd have three man events then. Yeah. Anyway, uh, next match Priest versus Gunter. I, as much as I completely despised the last match, I adored. I adored. I adored. Gunter and Priest. I absolutely. If this match didn't come on after the previous match, I might never have watched WWE again. <laughs> like they literally just said, they, uh, Triple H was there backstage going, 
Nine, nine Marcy's over there now having a freak out at yeah. four o'clock in the morning. Give him Gunter and Priest. Quick. I, I, yeah, right. Okay. I love Gunter. I love this match. Gunter is amazing. Um, watching him and OTT, seeing yeah. him evolve. Yeah. I mean, NXT UK, his match with Ilya Dragunov uh, with nobody. I love that. Yeah. Right? I, the, just hearing the visceral nature of the chops and everything was just fucking class. Seeing him in the... Uh, then, Ascend in WWE and yeah, what he's It's the become. power of presentation. You present a badass like a badass, you've got money. But something that Bret Hart said recently. Grumpy Guan. I love Bret, but he's a grumpy old bastard. Yeah, he? but something that he said recently kind of rang true. Mm-hmm. Um, he fucking hates chops in mm-hmm. wrestling. Because they hurt. And he says they hurt, and the whole point of wrestling is to not hurt your opponent. And he, no, thinks, the whole point of wrestling. he thinks chops should be banned. The whole and point that's of wrestling. all I could think about watching this going, the lads are getting the chest yes. chops off them. Yes. They should be banned. No, the Brett says you shouldn't hurt the other person. The point of wrestling is to simulate, simulate a com- Simulate combat. violence. Yeah. Simulate. Yeah, but sometimes you're just going to have to fucking hit each other. No, like the it's chest. simulate. No, you're, you're count, you're, you're, no, it doesn't need to be. Let the boys smack each other. It was so it's good. It's simulated violence. It'd be like it'd be like stunt. You know, if you're a stunt performer in a movie, sometimes yeah, they really crash the car. They shouldn't. Yeah, but they should. They'd be in a safe way. Yeah, but they, the rest, look, there's no, no safe way to crash the car. There's no safe way to get fucking. There is no safe way. Chop off gun it car. was just. I love this match. No, I like that style of wrestling as well. Yeah. But uh, priest, like here, here and Brett. Talk about that. I'm like, that he's too. he is completely right, to be honest with you. Like, you're seeing Gunter's chest bloodied. Deadly. And you're like... Deadly. Man, you could probably go about, you know, you're wrestling. You're bleeding, like... You can probably go about wrestling, though, without, you know, having to do that. Like, you will get your bumps and bruises, but... Like, can you imagine... Who was it? It was a big yeah, show. Big, strong, tough men, though. Yeah. It was a big show getting hit with a cane by Sandman. He's like, you better cut that shit out. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like... As an old stu- style wrestler, would you be like, "Fuck no, you're not chopping me"? Well, you remember when uh, Gunter beat Randy there recently? Yeah, we were like, like, Randy took some, but it wasn't the all-out Gunter match that you normally get. It wasn't egregious chops. No, it wasn't this. Mm. <laughs> like this is it. But I was. He took it himself. Yeah, I was so happy for Priest because I never thought Priest was that good, and then. He's had a couple of matches on this run where I'm like, you know what? You've really elevated yourself. Like, he's awesome. I've always thought he was awesome. I know, I didn't. I didn't. I was like, I really enjoyed him forgive NXT. me, Priest. I'm, I was unfamiliar with your game. I, I really enjoyed him in NXT, the archer of infamy. Yeah. Um, I, I just thought he was okay. Like, wait, like you know, I thought he was good, but now he wasn't top guy good. But now he seems kind of like top guy good. Yeah, um, definitely. Hey, but, first match without someone running into the ring post. It's because they were just too busy chopping the exactly. shell of each other. Exactly. Like, they broke the curse. It's, um... It's, I was looking at it going, this is a bit silly. Like, yeah. what's what is Gunter doing? <laughs> they, I um, like his power bombs. Yeah, they smacked the shit of each other. And Priest did all these great kicks. Gunter sold them well. And then do you know what they'd do? They'd go right back to smacking the shit of each other. And it was what, a uh, fight, like. Is that what you want from your wrestling? Yeah. yeah. Well, sure, why don't you just watch combat sports? I do. Yeah, just stay watching that. I know, I, I watch both. <laughs> I watch both. Because um, most of the time in combat sports, the guy I want to win never wins. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they get knocked out, and I have to... Tony Ferguson, his last match the other night, he got choked out in a minute. I've been watching Tony Ferguson for, I don't know, close to 20 years. Do you think they should do that more with wrestlers? Just like having you know, all the you know when they're you know when they're on the back end of their career, yeah, just chalk them out in a minute, just like. the, the getting the shit kicked out of them all yeah. the time. Just like stop, come Please on, just retire, relax. And you know what he did? He put one glove down in the ring because he didn't want to say he was fully retired. I'm like Tony, you've lost eight of your last ten fights. I'm in agony watching you getting beaten up all the time. Please. Money, man, money. I know that's his job. I know, but like at a time comes where. He just got chalked out. It's little taparoonies. Grand. Chalked I, out in a minute. I'd go out there and get chalked out in a minute for it. I know. It's, but so that's why I watch wrestling, because I don't have to watch my heroes get chalked out in a minute every week. <laughs> so the match itself, I, I thought it was cool when when Damien 
he's going, I can't probably fucking it. <laughs> when he's going for the razor's edge and, you know, we had seen Scott Hall there. Yeah. And that, I, in my head, I was like, I wonder what Scott and x Walker are thinking, watching, or, or Kevin, Kevin Nash, Nash, Kevin Nash and x Walker yeah, yeah. thinking, watching, you know, him going for yeah. the razor's edge. Yeah. And then I also thought, I wonder what Kevin Nash is thinking, watching Gunter gone. He would have never chopped me like that. Uh, I'd say I wouldn't, Gunter, I wouldn't let him chop. I'd say Gunter could chop whoever he wants like that. Mm. Fuck a Gunter. Um, and then Finn comes out. Yeah. So yeah, we'll take, right. So there's so much more. I just like yeah, I loved the match. What right? did you love about it specifically? <sighs> Give me a blow by blow. But so I loved Gunter's chops. Obviously, I loved that Priest like didn't wilt and he stood up to it. And Priest it was like a statement for him of. I can fucking wrestle you in your style and I can stand here and I can put you on your knees and then I can throw in some of my mad kickboxing shit and it was like, you know, priest stating like, I'm not, you thought you were going to come in here. You know, the storyline coming up to it, Gunter looking down on priest for being street trash, poor, street trash and all this. And so the, the, the opposite of the last match that I had they used that story to further the match of Priest going, you said I was street trash, look at me now. Mm. I'm beating you with your own game. I'm tougher than you. I can take everything you're going to throw at me and I can give you back more. Brilliant. Loved it. Storyline into the match. Right? And they beat the shit out of her. I love that. Like, but like, you know. That's really what you loved. Yeah. But like, it was the fact of priests. I just gained so much more appreciation of him in this match not the fact it was how he he presented himself and how Gunter's performance of like you know the times was like how do I beat this guy mm. I've drastically underestimated him here you know and so I just thought it was a great piece of business of yes you got the title onto Gunter who is your rightful champion he should be the champion of that brand so the title got put into the right place Gunter gets elevated because he now has a title and he's going to could potentially have an epic, iconic run as a champion. Maybe not this title run, maybe a future one, but he has that in him. Also, Priest got elevated by his performance. And Priest has a feud now with... Priest has a ready-made feud with his old allies. Well, we were talking earlier about... Um, so this is why the Rhea and Liv match went on first. Yeah, but we were talking earlier about swerving us mm. when Gunter kicks Finn... Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, fuck. Oh. Okay, so Finn's not turning on. But Gunter didn't know that, though, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he wasn't that's what part made, of that's the... That's what it made sense. It made sense, yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you know what, right? So, here's another reason why I thought it was a million times better than the previous match. So, the previous match had internal interference. Because Rollins is part of the match. And this one had external. Normally, I hate, mostly hate external interference. But the Finn stuff was so small it didn't interfere in the story of the match as much everything had interference if bar the bar the Braun and Sammy match yeah like Dom yeah interfered yeah you had uh, Logan Paul's cronies interfering Paul, yeah yeah um, you had Tiffany mm-hmm. you had Rollins yeah and you had um, you had Finn and Finn. The, the fucking yeah the like last match is the whole fucking yeah. it was just one big interference yeah too much interference on the show as well WWE, is that, is that look, a bad sign of booking then yeah but right if this was an AW any submissions show, any, yeah this one he chucked him out no he didn't submit but he chucked him out yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so here like if this was an AW show and they did like that six interferences or whatever we'd rightfully skewered them for it it didn't seem like I, that literally only hit me there now when I was talking about Finn I was like mm. oh yeah the Finn one was subtle so I was fine with there it there was a lot of interference in this show and also right so Finn comes down then and you know Priest fucking gets his special move off his special move gets the move off and he goes for the pin and pushes him towards pushes the ropes towards the ropes look whatever no but no 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 we can't say look whatever because like when we're talking about Priest, I think he got his bell rung. Maybe that's why he missed the pin and yeah. kick out last time. And then the time before that was his knee got caught on the ropes. Yeah, yeah. Was that not the last one? Maybe it was against poor guy. <laughs> no, because it was against he had Drew and he had it was the Drew match. His leg got caught on the ropes. Yeah, wasn't it? and then it was the Rollins match where he never kicked out. Yeah, 
and then there's this match where he pushes Gunter towards the ropes and turns his back on it. Yeah. So then, you know, they do the, they do the deal with Finn putting Gunter's leg on the rope. Do you, were you not annoyed by the pushing him towards the ropes? A little bit, yeah. Like, did it not make... Th- yeah, it made the thing a little bit... But I seen less. it happen. I was like, oh, that's silly. Thought, Why is he pushing him towards the ropes? Yeah. But I did like after that... Because it Priest, looked like Gunter was going to... Priest sees the replay on the and big screen. Grabs Finn. And go, this motherfucker goes for Finn. Like, they didn't make him look stupid. Mm. Like, oh, what happened? What happened? You know what I mean? Oh, what happened? So... Oh yeah, there's a big massive fucking screen up here. I can watch what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so many other times WWE don't do that. They was, oh, I'm confused. How did this happen? It's like, oh, he, he was smart enough, babyface, to look at the screen and see it. And I think they're going to go in a really interesting direction. With like, uh, what we appear to have now is um, a split in Judgment Day, with probably on one side you're going to have Finn, Jeddy, Dom, Liv, and Carlito maybe. I didn't even know Carlito was really in Judgment Day. Yeah, I don't, yeah it feels weird. Was he not with Ray and... Oh, I don't fucking know. And then on the other side, you're going to have some sort of Rhea Priest alliance, I think. Um, and it's going to be good, I think, for everyone involved. You can have Priest and Rhea against Finn and Dom. <laughs> Finn and Dom, that'd be awesome. Mm. I'd be game for that. Mm. Um, Judgment Day was a, good, was a good faction. It helped... A lot of people involved. Yeah. That's all you can ask for a faction. Yeah, sometimes. And you know what? It really helped Raw at times. And Rhea well. and Rhea and Dom, or Rhea and Priest were the two... Champions. Originators. Yeah, yeah. Along with Edge. Along with Edge, yeah. Uh, before they brought in Finn. So if Finn yeah. keeps up the moniker, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. I, do you know what? It did wonders for everyone involved. Would everyone you, got elevated from the faction. Would you bring in... Someone else on now priest side. on priest side, yeah. If you're bringing in Liv, who would be the the person that you could bring in on priest side? Mm. I would have said Dijak before he was gone. That would have been cool. If you're looking for a big yeah, enforcer guy, cool tag team, Dijak and Priest. No, Dijak and Dijak for oh, for for, for co- re- replace, yeah, replacing oh, Priest. Okay, yeah, like in that. the Judgment Day, I would have said that, but he's fired now. So. Yeah, he's not there anymore. So who else would you would you bring in? Could you bring in? Odyssey Jones is he still there? I don't know. It'd be cool to bring in someone. Someone, yeah. Instead of Carlito, even though I like Carlito. I like Carlito. He just doesn't feel like he adds much. Yeah, <laughs> he just he's just there. Yeah, he's just pulling faces and just like, hey, I haven't been here for fucking ten years, twenty years, fifteen yeah. years. Being kind of funny. Um, yeah, like I thought this was really good. I thought it was a great match. Anyone in NXT that you'd bring in? Obafemi. The, hmm, he could, yeah. Look, he, he needs to stay he, cooking. Yeah, I think he needs to stay cooking down, and he's doing great stuff. Like, and he's you can you know you can see him coming along a lot. I think NXT is probably the best place for him long term now, until he gets more reps. Um, but what? he would be good, well suited for that role. What about the Lucha Bros? Um, if they and. If they don't end up re-signing with AEW, because they're all, uh, I think Ray Fuego yeah. is what Ray Phoenix is trademark. Trademark and no, Penta so is one of some weird variation of Penta. Yeah, but I think that's more the, the trademark of that is more to do with CMLL. Okay. Yeah. So because they're would, doing, I would like CMLL. to see them in WWE. Oh, do you know what? If I'm them and I look at Dragon Lee, Santos Escobar. Humberto Carrillo and Angel Garcia I'm like fuck they're not getting booked very well why would I go there why would Damien Priest he's Latino Puerto Rican he's Latino is he yeah hmm. that just fucks your whole argument right there it doesn't fuck my whole argument because Dragon WWE don't have the best record with mass wrestlers except for one guy Rey Mysterio Kane Ken, Max, Max, Max Luchadors. Oh, you? no, no, you're changing it now. <laughs> yeah, no, Max Luchadors. They don't have a great record of Max Luchadors outside oh, of one guy. Fair enough. Like, it always felt like we've got room for one Max Luchador. We've had, we have it's our... T- different, different, different times, though. We're yeah, in different times. We're, we're Dragon Lee hasn't Dragon done Lee. much. He's done fucking nothing, and he's unbelievable. Yeah, but sure, it's the same in fucking uh, everywhere. Maybe, man, maybe Americans just don't register with... They mass don't, luchadors. but the luchadors have worked tremendously in AW. They're massively over with the crowd. Always have been. They're very fondly. 
give us a cruiserweight division. Just give us a cruiserweight yeah, like, division. Look, Make a brand exclusive. Ray Phoenix is one of the most joyous wrestlers to watch on planet Earth. When he's cooking, it's so nice to watch. And in Penta, he doesn't work super hard in AEW, but when he does, he's deadly. Um, but yeah, I don't they'd know what's great, going on. They'd be great. They'd be great. In WWE. They'd be great anywhere. They'd be great anywhere. Um, okay, so we get on to the main, main event. Bloodline rules. Solo. I thought he should have come out to Roman's music. That would. You did text me that, and I said, oh, "I like that." Idea. That would have been cool. Yeah. Uh, just to be like, I'm head of the table, this is head of the table music now. Because yeah. uh, Solo's music doesn't does not hit you in any way. No. Uh, like, he's only a, not that long into his run. No. He appeared at Clash of the Castle with Drew and Roman. That's when he debuted on the main roster. Yeah, what's that? Le- t- two years? Yeah, two years ago. Like, yeah. you know, to be main event in SummerSlam. He wasn't ready. You don't think so? No. Not yet. Not yet. Hey, look, he had a pretty decent performance. Yeah. But he's just not ready for it. Co- Cody's entrance. Hilarious. It was brilliant. But no, our text messages of that. You were slagging it off. I was like, oh, was- here we go. Cody with a big, dumb Cody entrance. And Aaron Anderson, I'm, and you were like a minute ahead of me or something. Yeah. And so you said, Aaron. And I was like, it would be funny if Aaron showed up. Oh, shit, there's Aaron. And he gave him the pep talk. I was yeah. like, you know what? Okay, Cody. Have had. I love Cody Rhodes. Got some friends back here. Yeah. Came in, I was weaving in and out of dressing rooms. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, he is the best baby fest. When is Pharaoh going to do a big shit on screen? <laughs> it has to happen <laughs> like, at some stage. Like the fact we even know his dog. I but know. I, I, he's, and you know what? Like I've been lo- watching some interviews with him since. It doesn't seem like... You know, a generic baby face and oh, he's a going prick. <laughs> I love you know, kissing babies yeah, and yeah. all the you know, the good old USA. He can be a bit pricky. He's a pricky like. And that's why I like it. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? He's, yeah. Like he's a very smart guy in that He exposes traditional baby face values. How is all. he a baby face? Like, look at the man. He's a Nepo baby. He's a Nepo baby. He drives his own bus. He drives his own bus. Or no, he doesn't drive his He's bus. He's the worst neck tattoo in the history of the world. He wears suits like a suit wanker. He has bright blonde hair. Like, you know, that's Ric Flair heel kind of stuff. Like, every you look at Cody, everything about him screams. Rolex. Rolex. Is, everything about him screams. Prick heel. Like, if this was the Attitude Era, he'd have been feuding with Steve Austin. But it's his love of wrestling and its history and what it means that he brings to the screen yeah, yeah. that allows it. Like, I'm sure... Like, I, I use I'm the word sure earnest. M- I'm sure on. MJF loves wrestling, but he yeah. doesn't generally bring it to the screen. No, you, you know. Don't. Whereas Cody, Cody is able to delve into that history and talk yeah. about this and talk about that and how why this means so much to him. That resonates with fans because all that stuff that means a lot to him means a lot to us too. Yeah. And we know how much winning that belt means. Yeah, legacy, family. Yeah. And for so long, we have suffered through this might sound crazy. Where these belts didn't matter. Yeah, this might sound crazy. This might, this is a hot take. Tell me if I'm wrong because it just hit me. Right. Coming in hot on this one. Make sure you're still on camera. Am I still on? Yeah, maybe. I'm coming in hot on this one, right? Right. I don't think WWE got enough out of the familial histories of the Rhodeses and the Bloodline. I know they even put up a big fucking chart on the screen. But there's not that much from the Rhodes side. No, I don't mean like third generation superstar, second, whatever he is, like son of a plumber, son of a son of a plumber, like... Both of those clans are steeped in history. I actually think, and I'm normally one for subtlety, I think they could have bashed us over the head a bit more with... With what? The legacy of Roman Reigns, his family, and the legacy of Cody Rhodes in the build-up to WrestleMania. That the whole fucking 
didn't think was I know, and I that. still don't think they got enough out of it. What they should mean? have even been less subtle about it. Man, for four years, Roman Reigns, like, he was anointed by, like, Afan Sika. Yeah, I know, I know. It's hilarious, of, like... What are you on about? I know, I... Did, what, I you, they should be bringing out Rikishi. Yeah, they should have had documentaries about it and everything. They should have had Dustin. They should, yeah. Well, obviously not. Dustin's on a contract for another wrestling company. But... I actually felt like they should have even been less subtle mm. about it, which is weird to think to say. That's why it's a hot take. Because uh-huh. they did get lots out of it. They should have had documentaries running around the clock on the importance of... We have, outside of the McMahons, the two most important families in the history of professional wrestling are facing off in the main event of wrestling. I don't know if you're saying... That, like, what about the the hearts? No, I'm not saying they are the two most important. I'm you said the two most important. Uh, that, no, I'm saying said. that's what WWE should have sold it as. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's and they of, kind of did. Kind of did. I know. So, I said it was a hot take. I th- yeah, it's a bad one. Okay, that's <laughs> fair. I did say, tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe. Tell me when I'm telling lies. Um... <laughs> Punk shit. So what else do you want to talk about? Um, what else do you want to talk about? <laughs> anything you want to talk about? Uh, so Solo didn't feel ready to me. Yeah. Uh, I've seen Meltzer tweet something. And he was right. And I got a bit of backlash. But he was right. He said it felt like... something. I'm paraphrasing here. The fans were kind of just waiting for Roman to show up. Yeah. It, it, they were like... Because he knew Roman was coming. So the first... And it's same with Bloodlines Rules matches. You can do some great wrestling before the interferences, but the fans don't really care till the interferences start. Yeah, a lot of this time I was like, can't wait to see Jacob Fatu show up. Yeah, you're, I'm just waiting. Cause or I, I wonder who who are Cody's friends. Yeah. I was like, is Ricky Starks? Could it be Ricky Starks? Be Ricky Starks yeah. And yeah, so it was like uh, the match doesn't really start until, yeah, you know, so... It's just hard. Like it was for us. It's late. What time was that? Like three thirty. Yeah, I'm still yawning. It's two days later. Yeah, and like we're like right. Okay, they're going to wrestle here for fifteen minutes, and then the match is going to start when everyone starts running. I hope Jacob Fatu is okay. Yeah, well, I I I really like the when he threw the steel steps. That was cool, and it bounced back. Yeah, and I was like, ah, cool. That was nice. nice. Um, like so, the match was fine. Uh, the was Tam- great, like. Tamatanga showing up. Uh, looks red. Yeah, come on. Tonga Loa. Let's talk about Tonga Loa. <laughs> How do you miss a turnbuckle? <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Like, how do you... How is he, he so bad? Ba- how is he so bad? I don't understand. Is he that bad? Like, yeah, he, he hasn't worst. had a match yet, has he? Oh, you can't put him in a match or he can't wrestle. He's the worst professional wrestler in the world. He wasn't done when he was in dub when he was Camacho, right? I don't know. I don't remember enough of him. He was terrible in New Japan. Like, it was a comic. Like, remember that thing of him with Okada? Like... Oh. Yeah, what was that? Was that a joke or? No, that was actually him trying to wrestle. No, it wasn't. It Stop was. It. I swear to God, it was in, in like a G one match. Yeah, and he was going, oh, oh, oh. But he, but he didn't actually hit him. No. Okay, so like that going, was taking am piss. I supposed to sell this or not? No, it was taking the piss. I don't think it was. Because we seen we seen Gorillas of Destiny at in OTT and. Like he wasn't that bad, like you know. I'm not sure. When we say he's the worst professional wrestler in the world, we don't actually mean he's the worst. But by God, he does his best to look the worst. How did he miss the turnbuckle when he was lifting Cody into the car? Like he looks like he always in the wrong place. Yeah, I don't know. He's fun- he's, he's definitely the funniest professional wrestler. The other one is uh, the 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 Dither Tonga. Hikaleo. Tang no Tonga Loa. Oh yeah. Tonga no, that is Tonga. Tama- Tama Tonga. Yeah. He's fucking great. Oh, yeah, he's he's vicious, wrestler. man. Yeah. Um, he, he's really slotted well into this role. I was unsure. But you know, he has a lot of experience. I think it's weird. He seems to have like lost weight and cut his hair. Yeah. And he looks less badass. Yeah. He looked like, remember him early days, Bullet Club? Mm. He looked badass with the face paint and all. I think he looks badass now. He still looks badass. Um, but he's definitely slotted well into the role. I'm oh. surprised at how good he's been on American TV style wrestling, shall we say. Owens and Orton coming out at separate times with their songs. That, that was like, theirs. Yeah, it's just, just Triple H playing. Yeah, just run out. Triple H actually started this show, didn't he? Introducing yeah. Jelly Roll and. Of course he did. He has to be on, he has to be on camera. Our savior. Our, oh, God, I hate him. Um, and then Jacob Fatu. I was just sitting there waiting for Jacob. Yeah. Um, I know Solo can take a. I think he takes the crossroads quite well. I really like that. Yeah. He, he kind of like delays himself before he takes the bump, it's, which is quite cool. Um, but yeah, yeah. Jacob Fatu comes out, he wrecks havoc. 
you're going, oh no, he's injured himself. Mm, he's after hurting that, his leg. Didn't I? But it was just, I think, to keep him away. Did, I, we did say that afterwards when we were texting. I was like, or what, did he actually hurt himself? Or was it a thing of, let's do that so he, we don't want him and Roman to interact just yet? Yeah. So he Roman comes out, everyone goes fucking mad. He yeah. looks badass. Uh, he has his hair dyed yeah. a bit more, his beard is dyed. And he looked they fresh. Did, they did the. The Bash of the Beach 96 thing going, Who is he going who, whose yeah. side is he on kind of thing, didn't they? Yeah, they did. They were like, is he going to come out and uh, I, I take felt, on Cody or is he going to go against Solo? And you're like... I felt that was unnecessary yeah, from the commentary. Swerve, they might swerve us here. Do you know what was nice? We didn't... There was nothing I felt that was egregiously bad on commentary. All night. For the first time ever watching WWE show, I didn't want to pluck my ears out. Pat McAvoy talk. Pat McAvoy or did did say this this is bullshit or this is this is shit. Something about Dom, that piece of shit. Yeah, they called Dom a piece, piece of shit. shit, and I was like, yes. No, I kind of just tuned out a lot of it. You know what I mean? Um, Maybe that was a nice way to drink a few bottles and watch. I think that's the best way to watch WWE show for me. Being drunk. Yeah, because it's not like you know, like it, WWE just isn't my favorite type of wrestling. So. There's a well, lot of I things. was like this. Yeah. I was still fucking it's sick. never ideal watching it live. For it's so tired, like for us in Ireland. It's and different. the Americans giving up. You know what I think it'd be cool if they go if they do two nights of a SummerSlam, mm. do one night in the UK. Yeah. Or no, one night in America and one night in the UK. On so, local time each. Yeah. Yeah. So like that way then We get the best of all worlds. You get the best of all worlds, yeah. But like for us guys doing like producing wrestling content it'd make it really hard for us to like do a live watch along type show or something like that I wouldn't really have an interest in doing that either no personally I wouldn't but like you know it, it's just like what are we going to do like I see a lot of content people are, people do that yeah and you know the it's fair never enough, good content but it's opinion. not that it's never good content it's just it's not what way I would like to consume wrestling or not consume it just watch my wrestling being watched yeah you know yeah I like to be naked when I'm doing it <laughs> you don't wear pants uh, uh, don't wear pants don't wear pants so Roman comes out boom are we gonna is he gonna fuck off now for ages I he's probably not gonna be on Smackdown this Friday but I think they need to kind of get Morton a bit coming up what's Survivor Series two three three months away War Games they're obviously going Bloodline versus Bloodline War Games so we need like the, the we're into the stage now of it's the chess piece section. They need to move the chess pieces around the board again. Because there's a lot of stuff to be done to get the original bloodline back together. A lot of hearts that need to be mended. Yeah. And I don't want that to feel super rushed either. He needs so he needs to, to be, be on TV. The Usos need to be back friends. Jay and... A lot to be done. Sammy. It's, I'd say that's Sammy and Sammy's. Jay are all right. Yeah. And then you still have uh, Hikalelu. Who acts as the healing force of the bloodline? Heyman. Hmm. Paul Heyman. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Possibly. Because he like they're they're all united in their mm. the way Heyman was treated. Like he was written off TV, so Yeah, I was surprised he didn't come back with, with Roman. Mm. Who does Cody Fest now? Uh oh god, I had someone in mind. Cody Randy? Yeah, I think that's probably the next program down the line. But I don't know, do you it's kinda hard now to turn Randy he- heel. Everyone loves him. Yeah. And I, I think people would love him even when he does yeah. turn heel. That's a tough... You're putting Cody in a tough spot. Who else could you put him with? Andrade? No? I would love that. You have to build him up. Yeah, yeah I know. He's just not in the right position at the moment. And, like And no tournament? Just Gunter just got the title from a tournament. Yeah, so... Wait, wait, well, wait. Yeah. Bad blood. It has to be someone that he has bad blood, but maybe solo again? I, oh, God, no. Please, God. Jacob? No. That would be awesome, but no, I think you soon. just let the get Cody away from the bloodline for a little while. Co- does Cody do Bash of Berlin? No, you headline that with Gunter, don't you? You don't need both titles on it. Yeah. You don't need it, you could, you don't need that. Enjoy SummerSlam overall? Overall, I did, yeah. I, I thought it was one of the better ones in a long time. Yeah, like for me. And one of the better pay per views. Uh, yeah, it was good, like. I did enjoy it. There was obviously that one match that infuriated the life out of me and one match that just gave me so much joy. 
and then everything else was fine. I would have liked this tag team match in there. Big calls though, like you know, mm. big, big new champions. Yeah, and they moved four. Again, like you know, the, what I said earlier about being more of an angle show was like they progressed or did lots of. It was newsworthy show. Yeah. Lots that's, of what, stuff that's, what you, that's what you want from a show. Yeah, lots of stuff happened. You know, you don't you don't want a show that you feel like you could have missed. Uh, yeah, but also and a lot I think, of the time wrestling for a long time was shows that you can miss. Especially WWE shows. Like there was lots of pay-per-views there that if you missed the pay-per-view, it didn't matter a fuck. Didn't fucking matter a fuck. Yeah, but now you felt like you couldn't really miss that. You know, like one of the guys in one of my WhatsApp groups texts in the next day said SummerSlam looked unbelievable. And he hadn't watched it. But I think the highlights that would come out of it would make it look unbelievable. Even though it wasn't an unbelievable, like it wasn't an incredible pay-per-view. Like it was a solid, good, good pay-per-view. What do we want from pay-per-views? Like are we always putting, I sometimes are like we, a bit more finality. Are we, want, are we putting things up into the WrestleMania 17 category where everything has to be fucking phenomenal? Yeah, no, that's not fair on shows either. No, I think I think this is a really solid. It was a really four very hours enjoyable show. Of my time, I, and I was sleepy, and I didn't fall asleep. Yeah, it was a good show. It was a good show in terms of like where WWE has been in ten years. It was a really good show. Like I didn't feel pissed off that I invested four hours in. No, not at all. And I, I have in the past yeah. with WWE with pay per views with AW with old TNA. Personally, shit. I don't really get that with AW pay per views. Is your mark? I it's my favorite company. Yeah, you know? still not like it I, sometimes. No, there are times where I lose my fucking mind. Like, you know, there's been some stuff, not so much the last couple of months, but they've uh, they've never let me down with a pay-per-view. I've never come away from a pay-per-view. There's a lot of dynamites and stuff from like... But you're talking about finality. A lot of the time, finality doesn't happen on AEW pay-per-views, does it? I, I think they end a lot of... They build up a storyline pay-per-view and then you get your... Season finale, you know what I mean? No, not an AW. I think I've gotten that a lot from it. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Particularly world title programs, like, um, but then you know, uh, yeah. Well, when, we, you're, like, when you're looking at uh, Will Ospreay and Swerve, like there was a definite, yeah, it was a, yeah. You knew that they were moving on to something different now. Um, what I thought, but then again, WWE's f- season finale is Wrestlemania so we're in the middle of their yearly cycle you know mm. so it doesn't need loads of finality right? and I thought they, they definitely like we know now the direction for the next few months I thought they did a good job at that yeah, we Triple know a, like Triple H says look that you haven't seen nothing yet yeah like we, we know that on the Smackdown side of things Cody's direction isn't clear but we know that the main thing that's going to come over the next few months is Bloodline versus Bloodline we know on the Raw side of things it's the Dissolution of the Judgment Day is what's going to kind of be the headline thing over the next few months. Do you think the Hardy Boys are shot? Jesus Christ. I don't know. Do you want them? Yeah. No. It's always nice to see the Hardy Boys in WWE, isn't it? Yeah. Just come back for a once off. Yeah, a couple. Yeah, do. Hey, what about Shane McMahon and potentially Hunt AEW? That's mad. That'd be great. It'd be great for a good ratings boost. Yeah, they bring guys onto the product. I think that'd yeah. be brilliant. I think the more more of this stuff that happens is, hey, look, is crazy for, shit happening is good. Yeah, like if if we sat down and did a week in review of like all the mad shit that happens within wrestling, you'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's a mad. It's, like just a one minute clip going. This happened and this happened and this happened, happened and this happened. Like lots of shit happens. It's nuts. Yeah. And SummerSlam happened, and it was great, and it I enjoyed good. it. Very, very enjoyable shot. Uh, we're going to be back next week for yeah. a new wrestling fan wrestling show. Let us know what you thought of the show. Comment and below. If you're in Ireland and you're going to Scrapper Mania, say hello. Yeah, come over and say hello. We're all going to be there. And Alan. And Alan. And Alan. Hi, Alan. I know that you watch. You can say hello too, Alan, even though you're coming with us. Yeah. But yeah please say hello to Alan. Yeah, say hello to Alan. Uh, yeah. If you see Dunphy... He's going to be with us. We're allowing him to sit with us. We already bought the tickets before he abandoned us. Yeah. Yeah. Before he turned heel on us. Because yeah. he's the heel in this, not us. Not us. Not he's us. the heel. We're the good guys. So if you like SummerSlam, like uh, or comment below. Let us know what you thought of it. Let us know. Was it the right call? Did you enjoy CM Punk and Drew McIntyre? Is the AW better? Should we change our pose for the old box? Yeah. Uh, we have been the old books this has been the rest of the fan wrestling show go on go off and enjoy yourself now aye